Hello, Drew. You're going to have to start the episode because I'm not going to start it roasting myself. All right. Before we sat down here, Drew decided to make a little bit of dinner. And um, at first, I questioned him because it looked a little suspect. Sus. But then he told me it was, you know, I saw him putting mayo in a pan of boiled noodles. I was like, what the fuck is this? And mayo, no- boiled noodles, and well, yogurt. I, ju- I just saw, don't say yogurt. <laughs> You didn't yogurt see, mayo? You didn't see the yogurt? I didn't, but that makes it worse. But I just saw mayo going into a pan of noodles, so I said, what the fuck is this? He said, tuna casserole, and I was like, okay, I make tuna myself. You know, I know a little tuna salad, mm. mayo go in it. But he pulls it out the oven, and I see wheat thins on, whole wheat thins on, on top mixed in. So I had to pull out my camera phone, roast them a little bit, and uh, the internet folds. The internet did its thing. He's getting cooked. But Andrew is a fan of his cooking, and he says if you tried it, you would enjoy it. You would. So if you guys want to see what the hell he whipped up tonight before this episode, go to uh, Dun and Drew Twitter. Go to Dun and Drew Instagram story. Go to my Instagram story. It's out there for you to let me, see your, for yourself. Let me explain what's in it. Um, make, that, make that cook, but what? I don't even know who signed this. Who signed that? Has that always been there? Yeah. Someone, someone from the first team, apparently. <laughs> um, so what was in the tuna noodle casserole? I don't. People are acting like they've never had tuna noodle casserole before. I'm kind of shocked by the responses I got, but it's popular to cook me, just <laughs> as it's popular for me to cook something sus. And I'll tell you how to make this in case you're at home and you saw it and you actually do like it. There were five percent of people on the poll that you put on Instagram that actually l- thought it looked good. And it may go up. It could know. go up. Good. Yeah, yeah. We'll After, check in the, yeah. the end of the episode. Okay. Um, it's 98.2. So, <laughs> 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 so if you're part of the 5%, um, here's what you do. Boil noodles, and once that's done, you put them in a bakeable pan, a glass uh, bowl for the oven, and... You mix in tuna and mayonnaise <laughs> and, okay, <laughs> this is where it gets sus. Baked mayonnaise. This is where it gets sus. Um, yogurt, and that's to keep it, make it a little sweet. Like Greek yogurt. No, it's just regular yogurt. It makes it a little sweet. What's regular yogurt? Yo play. Yo play. Um, and just you, plain yo play. Yeah, vanilla. Okay. And you ever have yogurt? Just plain old yogurt? Not in tuna. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you get a can of diced tomatoes, maybe the mild or the original or the hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, know, I know you like spicy. Uh, put that in there. The I got the original. It's a little spicy, but I'm me. So, uh, And then you get black beans. Those were not raisins. Those were not olives. Those were black beans. And... You mix that all together. You put it in the oven for like 20 minutes at like 400 or something. Mm-hmm. Then you take it out. No, I'm sorry. Before you put it in the oven, you put in wheat on the wheat thins. <laughs> you crumple up wheat thins and you sprinkle them on top. That's for the crunch. I don't know why that scares people. It's you. What's the what's the issue? It's for the crunch. You ever put I crunch? Understand. Yeah, I put Doritos in my taco salad. Exactly. But- and people put fries. In their or Dorito chips in their hamburgers for the crunch. Taco Bell puts Fritos in their burritos. Okay, you know? so this is the same exact thing. Uh, and it's then just I never seen wheat thins in a tuna yeah, cat. Well, here you go. I'm, I'm seeing new things living with you. you You're know? welcome. So I had to cook you. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. So, I haven't tried it. Don't think I'm going to. Well, I should. Uh, You'll try it. It's best right out of the oven, but we'll see what we can do. Maybe after this episode, because I know you'll be a little hungry. You are downing some rum. Mm. You're going to need some food to lay on top of that before you go to bed. Um, That's all I got. You got anything else? Uh, You went to Chip's wedding. Yes, that'll be on the Patreon episode. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll uh, talk all about Chip's wedding and me as a groomsman uh, on the Patreon episode. I'm clearly dressed as a pirate because it's Halloween week, so... You're about to get some spooky vibes this episode. I'm a pirate drinking rum. So. I am. Yeah, you've got the whole costume going on. I, if you're watching, if you're only listening and not watching, you should be watching as well. Run up our YouTube just to get the views. Uh, I am wearing my Brave starter jacket, which I contemplated just two weeks ago giving to charity. You did. 
And, and now they're in the World Series. And now in the World Series. I got it on two years in a row. My teams make it to the World Series. Mm. The Rays last year, the Braves this year. Um, I'm in my MLB bag. Uh, Eric what, is not. What will you pull out next year? We'll see. But cue the music. And I still won't grow up. I'm a grown ass kid. Swear I should be locked up for stupid that I did. But I'm a champion. So I turn tragedy to triumph. Make music that's fire. Get my soul through the wire. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, when a game, when a shot. Jags won the bye week because they are not last in the division anymore. However, I will not take a shot because of the terrible Penn State loss that happened this past week. Can't wait to get into that. And I think that overrides anything the Jags could have done during the bye week. But I am also drinking half this bottle of rum, so I guess that can count as drinking. But, oh, my God. We will get into that Penn State L. Uh, not happy, especially going into this weekend, going to Columbus for that Penn State Ohio State game. Never been to that matchup in person. Was looking forward to that being a top seven matchup, but that will no longer be the case. And Ohio State looking as good as they've been the past four to five weeks. It's probably going to get, we're probably going to get steamrolled. So I'm still going to be, you know, excited to be there. It's just going to be, I'm not going to be expecting much. Well, later on, I'm going to talk about that because I want to know if the quarterback's going to be playing. He played last game. Oh, yikes. We just Damn. looked. We looked terrible. I watched the highlights because when the game was going on, I was waiting for the ceremony to start at the wedding. So they told us to, like, put our phones away or put them on silent, and I was, like, trying to watch as much as I can. Like, this score. a Ch- Chappelle special. I'm trying to watch as much of the sto- score as I could before we walked out into the ceremony. So the last thing I saw was it going to fourth overtime. So... When the ceremony ended, I checked my phone. I was like, y'all ready for this? Because there's another Penn State fan in the wedding party. So I was like, you ready? I'm, we're going to look at it together. And they had lost in nine, nine overtimes. And I screamed fuck and started drinking. <laughs> um, the Astros are taking the field right now in Houston. Beautiful stadium. Um, is that <laughs> the one we walked by? No. We didn't go over there. No. no. Uh, but the yeah, Astros are taking the sta- the field. Uh, I think everyone's rooting against them, obviously, except for everyone in that building right now. Yeah. Uh, But my Braves, uh, they have a lot of heart. And Astros are talented. They're talented. They might win in in three games. That's how good their offense is. People are saying these Atlanta Braves remind them of that Nationals team that won a couple of years back. Can't speak on that. Yeah. That's just for the the baseball listeners out there. (laughs) But uh, let's see. Who were the kings of the weekend? Let's hear it. We are the kings of the weekend. And it just so happens that I have a king of the weekend, and I don't know his name. But I can tell you this. This comes from my friend, Bonnie, um, on Twitter. She's married to my other good friend, Tom, on Twitter. Nice. Uh, Bonnie says... Just out of the blue the other day, she said, my son stopped to pick up, stopped by to pick up. His, so she's like, uh, I'd say middle age, maybe 40s or 50s. Um, my son stopped by to pick up probably 40s. I don't want to. Why would I say 50s? <laughs> she's not in her 50s. She's in her 40s. My son stopped by to pick up his sister for dinner. We caught. She might even be in her 30s. I'm terrible with age. Does age matter? We we, <laughs> we caught up on school, his job, his dog, girlfriend, etc. The usual. Until he says, oh, did I tell you I'm gambling now? He then blamed Dunn and Drew in prize picks. Mm. So thanks, fellas. So shout out to her, Bonnie's son. You're welcome, Bonnie. Your son is now a degenerate with the rest of the Dunn and Drew community. Just wait till he starts betting on actual games and not prop bets. Mm. When we secure our bag... With, I'll put the bleep in there. Because <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. It's coming in a week or so, y'all. What about you? Um, hey, I've got no shout outs other than our athlete of the month, but I'm sure we'll get some. Uh, from no, shout, no shout out to like Chip? From, no. Um, <laughs> he gets a whole Patreon episode dedicated to him. Um, but congrats on the marriage. Yes, Chip. I was telling uh, 
my girlfriend. Because, you know, like, a lot of people nowadays, I don't know the stats, like, decades past, but, you know, you see a lot of people having divorced parents now. Like, a lot of my friends, most of my friends have divorced parents. I'm, like, one of the only people in my friend group with parents that are still together. But seeing Chip, knowing the type of guy he is, I know that he genuinely cares for this girl and he's a good man and that marriage will be very tight throughout the years till death do them part. So it was good to be a, that it was good for that to be the first wedding that I'm actually a part of. Cause I know that in his heart, that's a very good man, that chip Hawk. He's a great guy. Um, it was a very special moment and it was very fun. And you know, he had a, <laughs> Just kidding. You totally kidding. I'm you, keeping you up the. Chill. You have to chill. I'm keeping <laughs> up the uh, the competitive vibes that uh, a, people like to play between us. He had a great speech. He had a great speech uh, after the dinner and all that and shit. So didn't record it. You know, it was intimate. But shout out Chip. That'll be my king of the weekend. But um, you know, we got to give our shout out to Ryan Scullet, our athlete of the month. He got his post on Instagram. I got you, Ryan. I told you it's coming. Uh, but Athlete of the Month, Ryan Ska, Angelo State University, track star, Texas Longhorn fan. So if you guys want to, if you guys are Texas Longhorn fan, you want to reach out to Ryan and talk about Texas, he's on our Instagram. Check him out. DM him. Make friends with him. Honor Roll member, so he's a smart guy. He's got great thighs. He's also an Astro fan, so uh, I would be pulling for him. But we have another important member in our daddy's community named Brian. And I really want him to get this Braves World Series because he just had a son. Why? Yeah. 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 yeah I'm, talk, I'm talking shit about Ryan's Astros. Yeah. And I understand, but I just don't know what. Yeah. No one should be rooting for the Astros unless you're an Astros fan. Right. Correct. So, yeah, yeah. so sorry, Ryan, but uh, got to give this to Brian. So I guess we're getting a, a third king of the weekend. But um, Ryan, hey, we appreciate you for being athlete of the month for the month of October. Ska. Um, I, someone else, skay, someone, skay, so, someone else reached out from your school to be a sponsor athlete, but you know we might we might take a little backseat on that and wait until <laughs> spring. But we'll let him know. But uh, thank you for being a loyal listener, and good luck in your future endeavors beyond college. Cheers! Cheers. Did you see you. the DM we got today? Yes, it was from his teammate, right? No, not oh. a new one, a woman. No, this comes from Laney. Is she an athlete. <laughs> she's laney says hey i'm an indoor and outdoor t- hello swimmer track athlete oh it's a track so pod. uh notice to you track stars sponsored by dunn and drew um our girl laney is not only just a track star she's an indoor and outdoor she does it both i, I didn't even know there was indoor track um she says she's, she's an athlete at walsh university oh walsh you Shout know walsh? bryce bryce went there our first no guy. cap uh, maybe she knows him. Can I be a Dun and Drew athlete? Tell her to listen to a pod, buddy. How do you know she doesn't? <laughs> because I feel should like... Should we get her on and quiz her? Yeah, we should. Because I feel like if you're coming from a, a college that one of our other three athletes are from... You maybe, just got Then like, you were referenced. Yeah, reference. And that's just my assumption. And it, yeah, I've never seen her before. <laughs> so... We're checking all the boxes. Yes. <laughs> we, and we know our women listeners by name. That's how few we have. <laughs> Two. And I've never heard of Lainey. But... If you listen to this, let us know. And if you become a listener, let us know. Um, we are op- we open arms. Open arms. Oh, I knew that was coming. Ah, <laughs> you knew it. I knew it was coming too. Um, so no sponsor this episode, not for a couple weeks. Uh, but shout out to our Patreon. It's brought to you, Dun & Juice brought to you by our Patreon. There will be a Patreon episode this week. We're recording it after this. So subscribe to us, patreon.com slash Dun and Drew. You forgot about that, huh? No, I didn't. But uh, with our Patreon this week comes another episode of Hung and Promiscuous. Yes. Last week was so out of pocket. Or last time, two weeks ago, was so out of pocket. Written by the listeners. Yeah. So, and performed by us. All right, so I'm going to take this jacket off. It's <laughs> I knew you was going to be sweating in that shit. I feel shit. like Peyton Manning last night wearing his uh, old... M- Eli's old Miss jersey. I saw him put that on. I was like, you're going you're gonna to be sweating. Plus, you got the sweatpants on. It's Florida still. We don't have. I know, but it's October. I'm trying to channel the October fall vibes. I get you. Also brought to you by Dunn & Drew, our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Dunn & Drew. Join that. 
get in there. Um, we're on everything. Y'all know that. You, uh, I know we're not, I know we were forced. Whoa. You stay touching my leg, boy. I know we were forced to end our prize picks partnership yeah, a couple got, weeks ago. Got booted. But you won your first NBA bet of the season last week on it. I did. Took the over on Kevin Durant and Giannis's points, which were both at like 30. They were playing each other. Yeah. Same game. Took over on KD, over on Durant, or uh, Gian- Giannis. Giannis. And I won. I bet 50 and I won 150. And that's enough free advertisement for prize picks. And then I lost the next two bets and I left with zero. So, yeah, I'm uh, just like Bonnie's son, broke and a loser. Just kidding. Jesus. Just kidding. <laughs> and prize picks, chill, not in real life. All right. But we'll hit y'all guys with a new sponsor in a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing back a segment that was referenced in last week's phone calls. Would this be offensive in 2014? And we have a contender. And this might be a little twist on the game because I don't think it would. I mean, no, I'm sorry. I think it would be offensive. Normally, when we bring something up on this segment, it's something that happens, you know, today or this week. And it's like, this is ridiculous. This would not be offensive in 2014. But I think this would. Hulu, a brand on Twitter, tweeted. I don't even understand. Maybe I, I, some of these references are, are going over my head, which is a little troublesome because I'm nearing my 30s and I don't like when I miss out on things and I'm missing out on more and more. Hulu, yeah, the streaming service Hulu tweeted, we said yes, in all caps, Heart, 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 ring, 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 Mm. the ring emoji. Someone asked if we're always horny on Maine. And it got me thinking, like, this is perfect for this segment because in 2014, while today we're more offended by things, there are weird things that are oddly let go. And oddly okay. Yes. And this meme of saying horny on Maine has become, I guess, so mainstream that it's okay for Hulu. a brand like Hulu to say we're always horny on Maine. So I think, oddly enough, that in 2014, that would not slide when usually it's the reverse on this segment. Uh, I don't think it would be okay in 2014 for Hulu to, to tweet that. You said you don't get the reference. Are Do you know if they're referencing like a show on their platform or where did this come so, from? So I'm sure we said yes, exclamation, exclamation point, heart, 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 ring, 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 was maybe some trend that started somewhere and followed up by, this is just my gathering from how social media works and then followed by whatever they want to put after that. Um, and they decided to say, someone asked if we're always horny on Maine. Maybe it is a show because it is a show platform. Maybe it is a show. Uh, the first response is, my kids saw this. I had to explain to them at the dinner table what horny means. I will be canceling my subscription. Unacceptable. Now, obviously, this is just someone that's kidding. I hope. Yeah, it's definitely someone that's kidding looking at their bio. Uh, but that's You can funny. always tell from the bio sometimes. If that yeah. was If that was a comment made on Facebook now... I probably would have taken them seriously. Yes, I would too. Um, but to your point about saying these wildly inappropriate things back in 2014, but then being accepted, you're very correct. Cause I was part of that era of tweeting that, you know, I, that Ariana Grande's pussy tastes like cinnamon, apple shit like that. I used to say all that type of shit, but I'll say in 2014 brands weren't doing this. No brands were not doing this, but it did get 14.9 thousand retweets, yeah. almost 100K likes. So, hey, brands, keep showing out like this. It may help you. It's almost like when CBS Sports called Kyle Orton a legend on their Twitter this week. Kyle Orton. Remember that I saw name? those stats. <laughs> all right, uh, speaking of Kyle Orton, let's get into it. NFL season. This is an NFL podcast. You see all the merch, all the memorabilia on the table. I see nothing other than NFL shit. So 
Drew, kick us off. We're we're half almost halfway through the season now, week eight. We know it's good, we know it's bad, but there are some teams surging. Oh, and teams okay. falling off our radar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh yeah, if you go to preseason what we thought on some teams and what we think now, it's it's crazy. Um I did this a few weeks ago and I want to do it again. Just observing Sunday and Monday, these are my thoughts on how we stand and and how this past week went in the NFL. I'll give them real quick. One of uh, these NFC West teams, they had to be in last. I did not expect it to be the Niners, let alone at a like two and four record. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, Mahomes is not overrated. I saw that this week. Whether people were joking or not, couldn't tell. Got to be a joke. Uh, something just weird with them this season. Defense is ass. Maybe he's pressing. Patriots dynasty will never be repeated. Obviously, um, I would, uh, and the reason the, the the thing that spawned this thought was the Chiefs' struggles this year. Like you have a Hall of Fame quarterback, he's only in like year three. He's we already know he's Hall of Fame bound, and you have a great coach, Andy Reid. Um, yet you come out the gate, the Patriots have never started whatever they are, three and four, three and four, I think. Um, and it's just amazing that the Patriots in 20 years never, 20 years, never had this kind of start. And the Chiefs, with how good their quarterback and coach are, um, have in just year three or, yeah, year three. Uh, so that's that's what spawned the Patriots dynasty talk. Um, but shit, maybe the Patriots dynasty was all Brady because if he he looks like if he was on the Bucks for the next 20 years, he wouldn't mm. start this way either. Uh, another thought, I would pay probably, maybe, I say this, but don't uh, call my bluff because I might be lying. <laughs> I would pay to watch Tom Brady become part of the Manning cast every week if he was a call-in. I would, I would pay for that service, whatever you want to call it, Manning and Brady. Uh, but Peyton Manning and Brady on Monday Night Football this week was freaking fabulous. Them talking football was awesome. Maybe when he retires in 2028. Uh, Tom Brady has been to 10 Super Bowls and he hasn't regressed. I don't know why I threw that in there. It's just a thought that I have almost every week. Yeah. I was about to say, you say that every week, like you, every week you're amazed at Tom Brady's performance because that means like 42 years old, still slinging this ball perfectly to these receivers. Because I saw that Joe Flacco was traded to the Jets, the Jets. and I was like, Joe Flacco's still in the league. Yeah. I didn't. And he's probably like seven years younger than Brady. And we're saying Joe Flacco's still in the league. That's weird. He's been in the league forever. Yet Brady's still in the league at 44 and doing in one of the best quarterbacks. is just, I don't get it. I don't understand. Um, surely it, it helps, you know, the weapons that he has. But all right, let me keep going. I said it would be quick. Uh, how did the Patriots put 54 up on the Jets? <laughs> I know they're the Jets, but come on. They rookie quarterback and, I mean, not the best defense. I just don't understand. There were don't hella, understand. There were hella like one yard rush touchdowns. So I guess they were. That's just, just the that's the Patriots offense. Yeah, they were just driving down the field and. I was it in I was opening backs. the stats to to expect to see like, five hundred uh, yards passing. Yeah, <laughs> and like five touchdowns by Mac Jones. But no, I it, touchdowns were spread out. I bet like five running backs had a touchdown each. Um, here's some staggering Jets. Speaking of the Jets, some staggering Jets stats I learned this week. There were four rush touchdowns. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, the Jets in the first quarter this season, and I don't know if these are real. Points, zero in the first quarter all season. Passing yards, zero. That's one where I'm like, uh, there's no way. Did CBS check this? There's no way. In the first quarter, zero pass yards? That In the, in the all six all six games. I, that's one I need a fact check on, please. Yeah, that seems incorrect. Uh, total yards, 63. Like what in all games? First down's five. So that's kind of staggering. Uh, next one, jokes on everyone that roasted the Bengals for taking Chase over an O-line, especially that guy that was in front of us at the draft. Uh, roasted the Bengals. Was he a Browns fan? Yes. Yes, he was. Uh, and Mike Tomlin is not going to work for USC. Oh, I, I saw him. He's like, what the fuck? I got one of the best jobs. In the-. Why I automatically go to that voice? I mean, huh? that's that's not bad. Yeah. You sound just like him. Chill. That is my dad. And I'm done. Um, so, so my first thought after this week seven of the NFL, I've been absolutely reverse cowgirl girling Sam Darnold's meat. 
since he was on the Jets, saying this man just got to get off this team. He's a good player. And I was on I was on a roll. You know, first three weeks of the season, Panthers start 3-0. and And then all of a sudden, this man just starts – Regressing week after week after week. I don't know if How? Chris, I don't know if Christian McCaffrey not being in the lineup made him have too much pressure on him, but my God, Sam Darnold, they've lost four straight games. Are you playing me, Sam Darnold? Because surely you're not. Surely you're not a bad quarterback if you can go three and zero. Oh. Like and he looked good. You're just maybe you're just in a slump. I'm act, I'm talking like he's listening. Maybe you're just in a slump, Sam. But, but it's true. But um, you have DJ Moore. You got good weapons on your team. Panthers defense was like one of the best in the league those first three weeks. So maybe they're just in this lull right now. But they do play well, the Falcons this upcoming weekend, and we know they're not the best team. You know, they're in a dogfight every week with whoever they play. Lock of the week for me. And if the Panthers lose to the Falcons, Christian McCaffrey or not, like you're going up against, what, Kyle Pitts and Matt Ryan? That's about it. If Panthers lose to the Falcons this week, I will never say the name Sam Darnold again. Because it, you lose five straight, I got nothing for you. So, Panthers fans, y'all with me here? And I had a bet with one of our listeners that the Panthers will have a better record than the Falcons this year. Well, here's the game where I feel like my bet is going to be correct or not. Because Panthers with five straight losses, where are they going to go from there? If Chris McCaffrey comes back, maybe, maybe somewhere good, but... That remains to be seen. But um, another thought, the NFL is weird. It's mm. not consistent Mm-mm. unless you're a Cardinals fan <laughs> like myself. You know, we win in every week. But I don't understand, like Andy said, how the Chiefs, Chiefs, Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, how you score three points on the same team that the Jets have their only win against, the Titans. I score three points against them. That doesn't make any sense to me. And that's kind of where, like, our our game picks kind of – we try to, like, say, oh, this team beat this team, so this is who I'm going to pick. But it don't work like that. No. This year is wild. And I'm glad that it's kind of this year – it's kind of that way in the – oh, it is – sorry. The Braves already scored a home run in the first inning. So they already have one-third of the amount of points the Chiefs scored. (laughs) Um, Did you see that tweet from the uh, Washington Capitals? No. They scored seven and they said goals. Something and they said about these are all the NFL teams we outscored. Uh, it was Chiefs, Panthers, a couple other teams that scored like three or five Texans. Um, but, yes. I tried to look up when the last time the Chiefs didn't score a touchdown. I couldn't find it. Super Bowl? Did they score one in the Super Bowl? Ooh, I don't think they did. Okay, yeah, so nine. it wasn't. Yeah, there's three field goals. I, so it wasn't too long ago. Um, but damn. Um, but I but like the Titans D is not that good. <laughs> that I was I was <sighs> the fact that we all watched the Titans lose like five defenders on national t- television last week. I swore we were going to get a shootout. If you told me that the Chiefs were going to have three points, after the Titans defense got gutted by injuries, I am just I still don't know how why it happened, how it happened, what's wrong with the Chiefs, what's wrong with Mahomes. I don't know. I don't know either. But I don't think it'll <laughs> Oh, you scared me. I don't think it'll last. They play the Giants on Monday night football this week, and I have a good I, I feel good about it. I mean, I think after only scoring three Hold up. Monday night football is Chiefs Giants. Unfortunately it's Chiefs Giants, yeah. <laughs> This is the part of the year where the teams that the schedule makers may have expected to be good end up not being good. So it's like you're getting caught with bad games on your well television. That might be a good game. They're evenly matched. Just kidding. Giants have like their whole team injured. Um, well, they did blow out the Panthers. They did. Oh, my God. Panthers had three points themselves. Um, Like Andy said earlier, we were all wrong about the Bengals draft, unless you weren't. But – the majority of people that I saw were like, oh, Bengals are going to take Panay Sewell because we all know Burrow got hurt last year from a shitty O-line. But they get this man, they get his teammate from LSU where they won a national championship together, and all of a sudden, Bengals have the best record in the AFC, and we're on this podcast every week talking about how the Ravens are surprising everybody and 
looking like the most dominant team in the AFC yeah, and with all those preseason out. injuries. And they give up 41 points to the Cincinnati Bengals. NFL crazy this year. To the Bengals. Mm. Like, the, like the Bengals were down almost 21-0 to the fucking Jags at home. They pulled out the dub, but that's not the point. They put up 41 on the Ravens. Jamar Chase and Burrow is an insane combo this season. And it's crazy how that chemistry translates to the NFL, a completely different game with a completely different ball, completely <laughs> true, completely different and elite talent. It's, it's, it's amazing. I'm just saying, I'm saying that because like, I want to see that on my team. I want to draft a wide receiver in the top five. That's I was about perfect to, for my quarterback. I was about to say, does Trevor have any star wide receivers that he left at Clemson? No. T. Higgins? He's on the Chargers. The Bengals. Oh, Bengals, yeah. That's Joe Burrow got all the weapons. If T. Higgins didn't play for Clemson, oh my God, are, my me. Braves are okay. Let's go. On the road. If Braves play a home game in a closeout game, trying to go, it's so expensive. It's close, though. Like yeah, you, you can hang out and like like outside Wait, the ba- the ballpark. Do you think our new sponsor could hook us up? Maybe Victoria out there now in Atlanta. Oh my god, I would so go to that because the Braves have like a cool little like hangout area right outside the ballpark with like TVs and shit. No, I want to go to the game. Oh, you want to go inside? <laughs> I want to see. I mean, I w- if it's on a weekend. I want to see a, a World Series championship atmosphere. Never seen that shit before. And baseball lit, like in the playoffs. It's two like, zero already in the first inning. Yeah. America's rooting for you, Atlanta. Um, another note: Raiders are back. I went to Raiders Bears. They looked shit, and now they're five and two. Like that, John Gruden gets fired, and all of a sudden the Raiders are like back in playoff contention. They have like one of the top three records in the AFC. They're back. They're good. Derek Carr is playing on another level. Do he, coaches even matter? He leveled up. Or do coaches even matter? Or is it just talent? That is Head a, coaches, anyway. That is a deep question yeah. that I'm not prepared for. But the last thought I have is who's going to stop my fucking Cardinals, y'all? Who? The, uh, my Packers. Who? My Packers. Who? Get that cheese head off the table. Get that shit out of here. Who is stopping the Arizona Cardinals? 7-0. and They played the Rams. I thought Rams were going to win. The Cardinals said, shut the fuck up, Eric. We the goddamn Arizona Cardinals. Boy. This is why, you know, I had a feeling they were going to be great. Uh, Two reasons. I'm going to mention this again. You hate when I say this. What? Predicted that they would be one of the fewest uh, last teams uh, remaining with undefeated uh, record. You're so <laughs> proud of that. And also. You're so proud of that. And also. I have four Cardinals players on my fantasy team. So, obviously, I, I was up to something. I knew something was going. I have A.J. Green. Something was cooking in Glendale, Arizona, boy. <laughs> or is it? Where is it's it's Glendale? Glendale. It's got to be Glendale. Even though Urban Meyer calls them the Phoenix Cardinals. He's done that like five <laughs> times now. It's very weird. And my James Franklin head coach called uh, Ohio State, Illinois. <laughs> he, he's still thinking about the Illinois game. We play oh, Ohio State next. Illinois living rent-free in his head. Rent-free. We are going to get waxed by the Buckeyes, and I'm going to be so embarrassed, and I'm going to be holding up fire James Franklin signs. Nittany Lions players are going to come out thinking y'all play Nittany. in Illinois again. <laughs> um, but my answer of who is going to stop the Cardinals is the Bucks in the NFC Championship game. That's where we're going to see... The so Cardinals. Brady's gonna go again to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I have, I have Bucks in the Super Bowl. So Brady's gonna go to his eleventh Super Bowl. That's just un. I, that's unfathom. I can't wrap my mind about fathom that. it. I can't <laughs> wrap my tight <laughs> mind around that. Oh. Eleven. How many years has he been in the league? Twenty plus. So he's been to the Super Bowl over half. Well, no, it's not over <laughs> half. But it, well, not yeah, well, not. He's been to the he, Super Bowl. He's he, bro. He's going back, bro. He's do a stat. Real pull out a stat. Pull out a stat <laughs> on me. He's been in the league since 2000, so 21 years, and he's been to 10 Super Bowls. Half. Almost, almost. What the fuck? Listen, 
Listen, guys, Bucks are six and one. You know who's hurt right now? Gronk's hurt. Antonio Brown's hurt. Those are his favorite weapons this season. And he still threw for four TDs. Still. And you're telling me these Bucks aren't. <laughs> Where are you going? I don't know. <laughs> you telling me Bucks aren't going back to the Super Bowl? You if were... everybody, if Brady's healthy, they're going back. You wearing that if they go? Yeah. I got to. Ooh, pirate. Hey, this pirate costume was perfect for this season. It's Bucks Bills in the Super Bowl, and you can't tell me otherwise. Bring up the tape. God, my my little pirate. I mean, who are the Bills competition? In the AFC? Everyone's flawed. Everyone's flawed. Well, oh, the Titans I'm sorry, Titans. Them. Titans, Titans, Titans are beat fucking, them somehow. Titans are a monster. Titans came back on them. And I predicted this, remember? That's you one did. of my favorite picks. My preseason prediction about them being a freaking offensive powerhouse. It didn't look too good in the early in the early season, especially when they lost to the Jets. But as of late, everything is clicking. Like Derrick Henry, put him in the Hall of Fame. He mm. might become the best running back ever. He's already on pace to That's become true. to be the best statistical running back ever. Why am I so passionate about the NFL this episode? <laughs> Listen, we're talking we're talking AFC playoffs right now. Bills competition literally is only Tennessee and Cincinnati. No. Well, I know you say no, but we have to give them their due because I did, but they just blew out the Ravens. They did, but I'm not putting them on the Bills level just yet. I looked at the schedule to see if they play each other, and they don't. So if the Bengals keep this up, we've seen a 3-0 and Panthers team lose four straight, so Bengals could as well. Let's right, yeah. This is one of those teams where it's their first year being in the big stage. And we've seen the Bills the last two years not be able to make it over that hump yet. Um, so, yes, I, I totally don't – I do not predict the Bengals and, to be – And who would have thought that in, like, four weeks, the Bengals play the Raiders on November 21st, and that is a pivotal matchup for playoff position because they're both 5-2 and two right now. Bengals have a easy game next week after coming off this huge division win. They play the Jets next with Joe Flacco. Oh, well, the Jets so, beat the Titans, so. Joe – I'm snoozing. I don't know how that happened. I can't explain that shit. But all I'm saying is we are halfway through the NFL season after next week or after this week coming up. Wow. And you guys better enjoy it because this shit is over in three months. And we're going to be talking about the draft again that quickly. Hey, I'm okay with that. After we, after we waited all 2020 with fucking cardboard cutouts in the stadium, we're already halfway through oh. this season. Oh. oh, you thought that was gone. Braves boy. almost had a two-run home run again. But I'm saying if your team is shit like ours, just enjoy just enjoy the moment. Enjoy the season you have right now because when this offseason, you're going to be like, fuck, I miss football. And we're going to be talking about fucking Lakers every day and Giannis. Oh, and God. I can, ah, oh, God, and it's, spare and, me. And the NBA is, is never going to be like as competitive as the NFL is this season. Like we always have, you know, we always talk about the same teams in the NFL, in the NBA. But the NFL, we're talking about the Bengals, the Raiders, the Chargers. The fucking Chiefs are falling off. What? Hmm? what? <laughs> I don't want to. Inter- Sorry for interrupting you. Why can't college football happen in the NFL offseason? That would be perfect. Year round football? Or would we get overwhelmed with too much football? We wouldn't get overwhelmed with that shit. Okay. So if college football was in the spring, we could have NFL games on s- Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I don't understand why they have to happen at the same time. I don't like that at all, actually. I love it. You well, I I don't. I just I love the Saturday going from Saturday to Sunday. Yeah, like I am this weekend because Saturday you were so lit watching like a lit college football Saturday night game, knowing that you have a whole schedule of football the next whole day, whole day of red zone on the couch or yeah. whatever you watch or tailgating the next day. Exactly, football is it's tradition. It's a fall sport and then in spring we get our our baseball our basketball and our hockey <laughs> so speaking of derrick henry and the titans offense madden had a tweet that got me heated so after his performance verse who did they just beat the chiefs yeah i think it was before that what are they on a bye right? week who the Titans just beat? Because oh, he, yeah, they he, just beat the Chiefs. He had like that 80-yard touchdown run the week before that. Oh, yeah. So this is after the this is after the Bills game. After that long-ass touchdown run, 
after like three touchdown runs, three sorry three yeah, three touchdown touchdowns, runs. Yeah, they tweeted Madden, the new Madden. They tweeted one step closer to the ninety nine club. They have Derrick Henry at ninety eight, so he went up. He went from ninety seven ninety eight. I just please tell me what does he have to do? And I saw that and I was like, bro, why you get just give him one more? How hard is it to just be like, ooh, plus one? He threw a touchdown pass on Sunday. He's throwing passes now. That should have bumped him to ninety nine. He's running over every fucking defense in the NFL, and now he's throwing passes. I do, I do, <laughs> like genuinely want to know what does a running back have to do? He runs away from corners. He stiff arms, stiff arms D linemen. He's the best running back in the league. Best running back we've seen since Adrian Peterson. What does he have to do? To get that ninety nine, get ninety nine, because you gave what they gave Devonte Adams a ninety nine. What the fuck <laughs> does Devonte Adams do that's so much better than Derrick Henry? Nothing. He's. A, I don't know what they see in Devonte Adams. Devontae because Adams, he catches every single ball in Rogers throws during the game. That's the only reason I see. But it doesn't make any sense. Just give that man plus one more attribute. I'm like so blown away by this. They're like they. We know that Madden. The Madden creators are fucking dumbasses. <laughs> But this just like this is almost like irony or satire. The fact that they this is like something that the Onion would tweet. I can't believe that they tweeted that. Um, was gonna talk about the Bucks fan that caught Brady's six hundredth touchdown ball that Mike Evans gave him. <laughs> yeah, and then the, what Brady's giving him in exchange. But I feel like when something's talked about so much in mainstream. That you guys like don't really care. Like, what more can we add to this story? Do you have anything to say about this? Would you? What I want to ask you is, they ultimately. Oh, this is the tweet where Darren Roval, where he listed like all the shit. Yeah, the the guy that that caught Mike Evans' ball after he scored the touchdown. He's gonna get two signed jerseys and a helmet from Brady. A signed Mike Evans jersey, his game cleats. Yeah. And a thousand dollar credit at Bucky's. Oh no, I'm sorry, Bucks Team Store. Bucky's. Imagine two season tickets for the remainder of the season and next. Um, and then also Brady's gonna give him a Bitcoin, which is the biggest prize. Um, from there, uh, sixty. It's like sixty some thousand. I would take the Bitcoin over all of that shit. But, but, uh, but, but, but. If you were in the moment, you don't know any of this, right. and you catch that ball from Mike Evans after he scores, you don't know. So people are roasting this guy. When he was asked for the well, you know what? When he was asked for the ball, you know, a team official went over there. I wonder if he did say, "Hey, that's Brady's six hundredth touchdown. Can I have it?" In that, would you have given that ball back? Because I would. So before, so before the game, do we? Do yes. we know that six hundred? Touchdown pass is going to happen in this game. It's coming, but it's not like as advertised as his passing Drew Brees for the most uh, – whoever he passed recently Cause, for cause the most what, touchdowns. Because what is this record? Or Peyton. What is this record? 600 touchdowns, touchdowns. Thrown, thrown in his career. Yes. And he's surpassed that by – and Drew Brees is second, right? Uh, I think Peyton or Drew. And this was the significance of this was just it being just six hundred, not passing anyone. Six hundred is just the milestone. Yeah, yeah, we knew, we kind of knew going into the game that when he was going to surpass the touchdown pass record. I think that I think that was verse was a verse pass. No, we knew the game that he was going to surpass the touchdown because that's the the record. Yeah, because that was more of like a, a feat and a milestone. So why the fuck this was just six hundred like matter? I don't know because I don't. I've know always why. had I've always had this thing with milestone numbers. Why can't why is always like six hundred? Why can't it be like six hundred three? <laughs> <laughs> why isn't Brady six hundred third ball like a milestone? What the fuck is right? the significance right? of six hundred? That's he's a gonna, good point. He's gonna throw like twenty more this season. That's a good point. So why is the six hundred ball so point. significant? That is a good point because every th- touchdown he throws over six hundred yeah. is gonna be better than that six hundred. Exactly. So if, yes, I would have given it back. Like, oh, yeah. six hundred ball. Plus good, go, g- good karma points, and yeah, the the ball's good. The next ball that he throws is going to be better ball. If I'm belligerent, six hundred, just because it's an even number. If I'm sitting in zone as close as this guy was, and I'm, you know, somebody comes up to me and says, "Hey, this is Brady six hundred fucking touchdown pass." I'm going to give it back. I'm not going to be that guy that's like, 
nah, man, I'm gonna hold on to this all game. You yeah, you don't want to be that guy. But people were roasting, acting them, acting like they would do any bet, any different. But nah, no, I don't. I, think so. I would, I would give Brady his ball back. And now look, Brady literally went public and said, "Let's give this guy a Bitcoin." Yeah, it's. Uh, I think he's got a lot. He's got a lot of good karma points coming to him for giving that ball back. Yeah, uh, a game ball is not significant to me unless it's signed. Really. Like, you would have to... Well, that's all on video, though. That, the video would be enough for me. Like, the video of the Mike week, Evans yeah. giving it to me and all you of sell that. sell that as an NFT. NFT, yeah. That, I think the video of me getting the ball is more significant than the ball itself for me. Mm. And that's NFTs. <laughs> that's NFTs in a nutshell. Um, Damn, it is. But it is. <laughs> fuck. You just explained <laughs> NFTs to me. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, but yes... I'm giving it back. But that guy getting a Bitcoin, I was in an Uber last night coming back from uh, the airport after dropping off my rental car. Oh. And before he dropped me off here, he asked me if I was into crypto. And I've been getting that question a lot lately from a lot of people that ask me like randomly, are you into cryptocurrency? And I was like, yeah, I dabble in a couple of, of coins. And he said that Bitcoin he thinks is going to get up to like 200,000. All right. Just kidding. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. You it does know. drive you. You don't know. Like, Bitcoin is at 60K right now, and that shit was once just a, an idea. It and is still an idea, isn't it? And it's now, like, actual value to it, worth 60000 for one. So. I just I the, just don't. I don't, I, under, I don't understand the crypto world. I just know that it's here and a thing, and it is profitable and valuable. It's I just, just don't understand how it works. It's just an I it's just an I where's the it's value? It's digital. Come from? It's just all digital. Where's the value? Like what is it rep like the money that we spend represents gold. What does Bitcoin like where does it it's so crazy. Money can just be created. It is. It's literally created. Like we put value to the piece of paper that we fucking print. Because you just we, have yeah, you have to make sure everyone agrees that this is valuable. And you can trade this for services or goods. Yeah, we could have an uprising and all say, fuck money. We're never working again. But then society would be in shambles. Yeah. (laughs) So that's where we're at right now. But we digress and we're giving the 600 touchdown ball back. (laughs) So is next week our week eight power rankings off the dome? Next week we'll be doing week eight power rankings off the dome. We did week four. And let's let's recap. Well, we'll recap next week, but we'll recap now because there's only eight teams. But are we having nine? Oh, ten? Why oh, we have ten? We did top ten? Yeah. Oh. Cardinals at one. That's not That's probably change. still the same. That's crazy. Bills at two. Well, it'll change after. Maybe they'll they'll change after they lose the Packers. I don't know. Bills at two. Rams three. Cowboys This is a good four, list. That's still a good list. Chiefs five. Yikes. Six bucks. Oh, they're rising. They are up. Ravens seven. They're yeah. probably off. Right? You think they'll be off the... Mm, they'll they be top exposed. 10. Maybe 10. They'll be top 10. Uh, Packers will still be in yeah. there. They're at 8. Chargers. Chargers should be still in and there. And Raiders. And Raiders. So This is a good-ass list. We may just get a, a scramble. A shuffle. God. A couple of yeah. sand yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll probably get a little scramble in a shuffle of these teams next week. And one of these teams will be off the list. It'll be the Chiefs, most likely. Mm. Uh, especially yeah. if the Giants beat them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Monday Night Football. I would love Almost that. Almost said Sam Darnold. Daniel Jones. Um, but undefeated watch, Arizona Cardinals 7-0. and Still. Thursday Night Football, Kyler Murray versus Aaron Rodgers. No Devontae Adams, though. COVID protocol. He yeah. needs two negative tests in the 24-hour period before Thursday. Well, not happening. maybe he just got a false positive. That's like, you like think, the, do you think there's still false positives now after this being going on so long? Still have false tests? I don't think so. I don't know. So you think he has COVID? Someone tested positive in in that locker room or whatever. Whole team. So there may be more positive tests from the Packers coming out. And Kyler Murray's just loaded with weapons. Look at this. No, sorry, not that. Oh, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Burrow got Home Jamar run? Chase, throws for 400 yards. Or was it 500? Please don't tell me it was 500. It was 400. Okay, yeah. thank God. Just a little bit above 400. Kyler Murray gets DeAndre Hopkins. They're undefeated. Um, 
uh, Josh Allen when he got Stephon Stephon Diggs. Yeah, he turned a corner. Um, Ben Roethlisberger's always had a number one receiver until now, and he's struggling, but he's getting up there. Hey, Kyle Pitts is turning up. Kyle Pitts, unfortunately, traded him, so it would be yeah, unfortunate. He did. Unf- he's get, he's got like twenty points the last two. Games. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry. It'd be unfortunate <laughs> to see him, you know, go back to his old ways. So what I'm saying is, I'm again saying that we need to get Trevor, someone. We do, and I I think it's Devontae Adams. I think you got to go full court press on him in the off season. He's not leaving if. If, yeah, if Rogers there. stays, he's not leaving. Yeah, so maybe our first string to pull or our first card to fall will be Rogers. We gotta get Devonte. How you feel about Michael Thomas? Yeah, but I think he'd be. A, he, we didn't need to trade for him. I don't know if he's an. I don't know if he's a free agent. So we need to trade for Michael Thomas. But he's not. I don't see. He's a possession guy. He ain't going down the field. He's not. Like Stephon Diggs or DeAndre Hopkins or well, he'll slice, Jamar Chase, he'll slice you up all drive. He though. will, he will. And Michael like, Thomas loves Urban Meyer. Um, who else? Allen Robinson, come back. <laughs> I don't see that happening. Odell, um, but there are. He washed. I think Trevor's a, a. There's something about Baker. I think there's something psychological about Baker and and. Odell that that just doesn't work out so maybe Odell but I don't want to make Odell our offseason get for number one receiver but um, um we're talking about Cardinals here and they're seven and no and I don't see an end in sight because they're everybody on that team is healthy Kyler Murray is throwing to DeAndre Hopkins AJ Green he revitalized his career Rondell Moore they got in the draft deep ball threat Christian Kirk deep ball threat he's a wide receiver three four he's he sometimes leads the team in, in receiving, and they have Hopkins on their team. Um, I think that's the top. I think that's their And they four. just got Zach Ertz. They just got Zach Ertz. He had a 47-yard touchdown catch last week. Who Not is fair. stopping this team? Why do they need a trade for him? Like, they're <laughs> loaded. They, they needed a safety blanket because <laughs> everyone else goes streaks. Yeah. So they needed someone, like, to, to stop at the 10-yard line. They someone to run that A route from Madden. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, Cardinals will beat the Packers Thursday night football with, with Packers having no Devontae Adams. I don't think uh, that's enough for Rodgers to beat the fucking offense-heavy Cardinals. Um, but on to week eight picks. I went 0-3 this past week. I dropped to 10-8. Yikes. 10-8 and 8 on my season record. Still above 500. That's the goal. What and, am I? And to beat Drew. Say it. Who's 12-6. and six, Woo! Playoff team. <laughs> I'm a wild card uh, until I'm not. Uh, um, my, I'm I'm struggling, y'all. Like I'm at 500 with my upsets on my game of the week. My locks four and two, but I need to I need to rebound this week. So here we go. Week eight, my lock of the week: Bills going to smack the Dolphins. They played already this season. Bills won 35-0, <laughs> and. It's going to happen again. Damn. Dolphins are down bad. One in six after starting the season beating the Patriots. They've lost six straight. Dolphins fans, you're down horrendous. About to be one in seven. Because Bill's coming off a bye week. Boy, you're hungry. (laughs) (laughs) I'll admit my lock of the week is a little courageous. I have Atlanta over Carolina. You really want me to not say Sam Darnold name ever again? I I just I wonder if he's gonna start. Duh. Who did back up? He just got benched. Donald got benched? Who the fuck came in for him? Are you kidding? Yeah. Will Greer? No. Sam Darnold got benched. I thought we talked about this. No, we didn't. If we did, my bad. Forgot. I was busy weekend. Oh, PJ Walker. Yeah. He played in uh I hit you with this. AAF. Who? <laughs> he went three for thir- fourteen. Bum. I did not know PJ Walker came in for Sam Darnold, but my God, I hope I hope the Panthers can come out and beat the Falcons, or I'm down bad with that take. Uh, my upset special, you guys are going to snooze on this one, but I was looking at the schedule, and this is probably the hardest game to pick every week. Uh, upsets in the NFL are not easy to choose, but I'm going with the Washington football team to beat the Denver Broncos. 
on the road. Well, yeah, the Bronco. You picked a team that's down bad, so no, they're, well, they're both down bad. Wait, yeah, they're both down bad, and I, I think Washington football team will beat the Broncos outright. Heineke is slinging. McLaurin is catching. This is your upset. I'm reading this right. This is your upset. You sure you don't want to change this? Well, please change this. So I have the same. Oh no, no, yes, 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 yes. We're getting to that. My upset, yes, it's Packers over are the Cardinals. That is some, yeah. cap. You think Green can, Bay is ending this win streak? Do you know Aaron Rodgers? Do you know who this man is? He will see this undefeated Carolina. Carolina sorry, Cardinals. And he's going to crush that. He doesn't care. Ooh. Okay, so I, I'm all, I'm even R- Robert Tanyan, um, Lazard, <laughs> Lazard and Cobb, and Mercedes Lewis, bro, and this, Aaron Jones. Trust you're walking into an L here. I'm letting you change this right now. Well, I have space. I have room to breathe because I'm blowing you out, no, blowing me out by two games. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know, will you let me do this? Because my game of the week is Packers and Cardinals. Oh, Can I double down on that? So if I get both of them wrong, that's two L's. But if I get both of them right, that's two W's. Will you let me do that? (laughs) Yes. So my game of the week, Packers over Cardinals. Run me two W's there, and that's two L's. No, sorry. It will be, yes. You're right. No. (laughs) (laughs) I misspoke. (laughs) No, you didn't. You spoke greatly. Big greatly. <laughs> Great speaker. Packers are not beating the Cardinals on Thursday night without Devontae Adams. What if they had Devontae Adams? What would you say? It would be a much better game. Much better. Hey, I think. Hey, we'll see. Was this Thursday? Yeah. I can't wait. I'll FaceTime you. Oh, I can't wait. If you're up. I'll stay up for this one. I'll hold you to it. It's going to be a good game. hold you to it. I'll probably be watching at the bowling alley. Gloves bowling. My game of the week is Patriots at Chargers. Here we go. Tomato my biz. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hit snooze. Can't hit snooze. You fucked up. Wrong button. Patriots at Chargers. Why? Because. Stop, stop doing that. What am I doing? You're touching my foot. I didn't mean to. Patriots are coming off this 54-point barrage. Doesn't matter who they played. It's the NFL. Every team good, right? Elite talent. Every team. 54 points. And Belichick going to come into this game against Justin Herbert, the, the surging Chargers. And he's going to want, he's thirsty for blood. Thirsty for blood. He wants to beat Justin Herbert. He said, I got Mac fucking Jones, boy. The new Brady. Come on. Chill, man. First fucking preseason game you watched. He was like, oh, Bill Belichick for the Brady. Head up. Give me the Patriots to beat and upset the Los Angeles Chargers. You heard it here first. On Don and Drew. All right, on to NBA. Uh, nothing. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I don't think NBA has any business being on TV right now. I hate that it's on TV. I'll see it on TV and I'll cringe. I'll see it in the guide. I'll cringe. I'll be like, Ugh, why would I watch this right now? <laughs> Other than my Bulls starting off 4-0, oh my God. there's nothing that I'm interested in at all in the season yet. Start NBA on Christmas. You shorten the season, make the games mean more, and you start the NBA season, all of a sudden, you know, it's All-Star Weekend. So, you, oh, shit, shit's uh, picking up. Football season is ending, and it's time to pay attention to the NBA. And the players aren't worn out. The players aren't taking primetime games off or any games of significance off to rest because there just aren't as many games. What? Tell me why we need, as a viewer, NBA right now when you're competing with baseball, hockey. Let's go, Braves. Mm. Line drive. Baseball, hockey, NFL, college football. NBA has no... It's no business right now being on TV. We do not need you right now. That's my take. 
I do miss the shorter NBA season. Like, 82 is a lot. I forgot what it used to be before that. I think it was like 60, 50, 60. Um, but I, I agree. I, I'm not too into NBA season. But it's because we prefer football over that. There's people out there who prefer basketball over NFL, so I'm sure they disagree. But – Sometimes I will see an NBA game on and Curry will have like 40 points on 11 of 11 three pointers. And, and who the and fuck I li- cares? I like to join in the conversation. But with who that. the fuck cares in October? A lot of a lot of people just like having basketball back to watch because they're passionate about the game. But for our fandom, we don't give a fuck until Christmas and on because we understand that none of these regular season games, man. You were watching like Rockets and Mavericks or the other day or some some fucking combination of teams and we're like, why why does this game matter? Why does this game matter? And I was just like, for the records. <laughs> but I agree. But that being said, Lakers playing the Spurs tonight. So I know uh when it comes to when it comes to NBA, Twitter mostly cares about because they have the most the biggest fan base on on social media, Knicks and Lakers. So Spurs beating the Lakers tonight. But do not give a fuck about NBA. Especially when my Seattle Kraken have, have just started the season. I got to watch hockey now. A lot of things to watch, guys. But on to my favorite sport. College fucking football. No soundtrack today because Penn State lost. So let's get into this real quick. Let me breathe real quick. <laughs> breathe. <sighs> How did, so what Shut was up, not done. Not done breathing. Let me breathe. Fuck. All right, I'm good. I'm good. What was the final score? Final score was 20 to 18. And how does that happen in nine overtimes? As far as I'm concerned, nine overtimes would be like a 50 to 60 game. 50, 57 to 60 game. Can you explain how that happened? Yes. Normally that would be the case. Like when LSU, Texas A&M, yes. seven OTs. They changed the rules so that would not happen again and take a toll on these college young players' bodies. But we still went to nine. So, OT rules are the same up to the second OT. What are you laughing at? (laughs) I'm just laughing at Roman's comment, Drew from the trenches on God. (laughs) (sighs) Um, So, OT rules, same first period. Each team gets the ball, 25-yard line, they get to score. Second quarter, same thing. Each team gets the ball. They get to score, but they have to go for two. Man's reading all the the Instagram comments about your cooking. There's a lot. Sorry, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> all right, sorry, sorry, sorry. There's a lot. Okay. So, starting second OT, you have to go for two after you score. So, the game and should end. In the second OT, both teams got field goals, so nobody scored a touchdown. So, we went to the third, and now what they changed this season is – Starting third overtime, both teams get one play at the three-yard line, which is a two-point conversion. One play? Two-point conversion attempt. So if they get it, they get two points? Starting from the third quarter, or a third OT. So neither team got the two-point conversion in that one play in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, they got both got it in the eighth, and only Illinois got it in the ninth. Uh, so it's a two point conversion from the three. Yeah, not even from like the two. You get one chance. So that's how they like make it so there's not so much toll on the body. Yeah, you get one fucking chance to score. I, mean, I get it. And it took nine overtimes for one of them to score and the other to not. It's so like uh, NHL. Um, and I was oh. getting. Overtime. Yeah, I was getting updates. Or, I was getting updates from one of our listeners saying, oh, Penn State, they score here, they win. And I was hoping for that text saying we got it. We didn't. Yeah, because you alternate who gets to try second. Yeah. And I and I had Oh, to, my God. They went that many without fucking getting it in from the three? Yeah. It's one play, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, wedding ceremony ended. We all walked. Uh, the wedding party walked off, went outside. Pull out my phone out of my suit jacket pocket, click on my screen because I know the update's going to be on my notification center. And it said, Illinois stuns Penn State in a 9 OT thriller. And I yell, fuck. 
and starting to drink. So right, tighten your mic. Tighten it. I am in I am in fucking shambles right now. Because like I said earlier, was expecting to go to Columbus with like Penn State being, you know, four, five and Ohio State Ohio State being top five. But Ohio State's five and Penn State's twenty. We do this every year. It's so frustrating. Every year. You can't lose one game. Well, you can if they're a really high ranked team. You can't lose one game in, in college football. You especially can't lose to an unranked team. So we're in the mud, but you know, hope hope's pretty much lost. We're not I'm not even gonna try to be optimistic about Penn State's season because I think Ohio State kills us. But other than that L, the other top twenty five L's were Coastal Carolina lost to Appalachian State. I saw you tweet uh Appalachian State's campus with like a funny caption. Is that app? That's a camp. That's a real campus. That's their campus. That's fucking beautiful. You didn't see the football field in the picture. I did, but I, didn't, I just it looked fake to me. What was your caption? You said ja- I think you said Jacksonville. Yeah, J- I said Jacksonville. Jacksonville in the fall. I said <laughs> North Jacksonville's North Side looks so beautiful this time of year. That guy, that tweet blew up. Got like eight hundred likes. Yeah, a lot that, of a lot of replies from was, Black Twitter too. That was funny. That lives on that North Side <laughs> saying that's cat. <laughs> Appalachian State is their football stadium is like smack in the middle of like this beautiful mountain range and that's fall that's, scenery and that's all you got to do to recruit me. I think they're in North Carolina. Just, just give me the vibes. But they beat number fourteen Coastal Carolina. That's their first win against the top twenty five team since they beat Michigan that one year that we all remember where they blocked that kick and returned it for a touchdown. Yeah, we all remember that. Yeah. Oh, wait, I do remember you that. Do remember that. Oh, my goodness. That was crazy. A long time ago. It was the last time they beat a top 25 team. Um, that long ago? Jim Harbaugh was still there. Yeah. Was he? How long ago? That was a long time ago. Oh, like long? Like over 10 years. Oh, then no. That was but, like 06. <laughs> but something did happen where Michigan was going to win on like a field goal, but it got blocked and the team returned it for a touchdown. Either Michigan did it to another team or it happened to Michigan. It was 2007. A long, yeah, long Jim time wasn't. Ago. I mean, Jim Harbaugh wasn't there. No, he wasn't. Uh, who else? Who else lost? Sorry. Um, Purdue lost to Wisconsin after beating Iowa. They stunned Iowa. Number two, Iowa. Number Purdue, two, Iowa. Purdue comes out and loses their next game. <laughs> it's like when yeah, college football is so weird. It's like when Iowa beat us and then they come out in here and lose to Purdue. College football like it happens. Um, number eight, Oklahoma State. I was talking about how they were going to be playing Oklahoma at the end of the year undefeated in that in-state rivalry, but they lost to Iowa State. So that won't be happening. And then number 18, NC State lost to Miami. No one cares about that one, but you know we go through these ranked team losses every week. So new top 10, Georgia still at one, Cincinnati two, Bama jumped Oklahoma to go to three. Mm. Because Oklahoma, bro, they should not be. I do not know how they're still standing, but they're here. Ohio State is five. And Ohio State will jump Oklahoma. If Oklahoma finishes the season undefeated, Ohio State is going to jump them with that one loss because they play Penn State, Michigan still, who's six, and Michigan State, who's eighth. So if Ohio State beats all of them, they're going to jump Oklahoma. Michigan is six. Don't know how they're undefeated. We were talking about Jim Harbaugh being fired in the offseason. Mm-hmm. And he's got the Wolverines undefeated and one yeah. one ranking below Ohio State. And I think he signed the extension, didn't he? Yeah, he got extended, which was uh, to a surprise by everyone. Yeah, so Oklahoma, or, uh, Michigan and Ohio State, you know, they play every year at the end of the season in rivalry week. People are going to be expecting Michigan to compete with Ohio State this year. Like you're both top six right now. We're expecting Michigan to like at least put up. A when fight. do they play? Last week of the college football season. <sighs> rivalry, rivalry week every year. Jinx. Number seven, Oregon, still up there. Michigan Ooh. State. Woo! Sorry. Why are you guys so hyped for an out? <laughs> it wasn't an out. He was safe. Oh. Look at this shit. <laughs> that was like simultaneous. Yeah. Oh, what a heartbreaker! That is great. Posi- the bases are loaded. 
two outs. Two outs, unfortunately. But Atlanta's up 3-0. Bases are loaded. They're at the bat. Let's go. I think there's going to be a walk run. Okay. Well, I'm going to say it's going to be a pop fly out that usually these things end unceremoniously. Like a ground out. <laughs> and, and, yes, and anticlimatically. So I'll let you know. I'll give you an update. All right. Iowa number nine and Ole Miss 10. Um, but yeah, that's what we're looking at, top 10. So just like the NFL this upcoming week, there's not much excitement in the NCAA football game matchups this week. But uh, college game day. NCAA football game matchups. Chill, cracking, cracking, hitting. Oh, I get it. Yeah. A lot of <laughs> references all over the place. College game day is in East Lansing, Michigan, for that Michigan-Michigan State game. Both are 7-0, and number six versus number eight. Important game for both of them. Uh, I'll be watching this one before I go to Penn State, Ohio State, in Columbus, because that one's at noon. What are you doing? I have a question. Hello. When are you going to the – oh, he struck him out. When are you going to the Kraken game? That is Sunday evening. So you're going to the ja- – wait, so you're going – so you're going to Jag Seahawks and then Kraken? Yes. Wow. Are you have you thought about wearing this pirate costume since it's Halloween and it's Kraken Pirates? Mm. I am taking this costume, but I didn't know if I was going to wear it to the hockey game. Yeah, it's a little weird, but it is Halloween. It, it would be funny. It it would make for somebody to record me and get on camera, so I might wear that shit. Yes. Um, but um, Jag Seahawks is at one o five Western time. Western time, and then the Kraken play oh, yeah. at seven Western. Oh, perfect! So I've got plenty, plenty of time, time in between to catch both of those. Or my capping. Hold up! I just looked at the wrong fucking game. Six. Tomato. Yeah. Um. Also this weekend, mentioned Penn State, Ohio State for the 17th time. That's a 7.30 game. So, gonna Oh, my God. So they did f- put it on the night. Yeah, it's prime time. Man. Um, so I was, it, sh- it should have been like number five Ohio State versus number six Penn State. God But we're going to get number 20 Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> and a 20-point loss. In my, they're doing a scarlet out. So they're... <laughs> Everyone wearing scarlet for this primetime game, and I'm going to be the lonely guy in blue like when FAU came to Ohio State. So I'm looking forward to the content coming out of that game. There will be a long vlog from this weekend coming up. There will be uh, Penn State, Ohio State, Jags, Seahawks, and Kraken Rangers. So you get three games in one vlog. It's going to be wild, and we have some – Dunn and Drew listeners joining. We have a guy from my college joining, and we got manager Ebrio joining. So we got pe- three people from all these different places joining me in these festivities. So it'll probably be, all be three L's too, you know. And then I wish you, I was going with you. No, well, you could. But uh, UGA Florida is also this weekend, which we were supposed to do a tailgate with our new sponsor, but it fell through. So looking forward to an SEC tailgate. But Jacksonville will be hosting – Georgia, Florida this weekend. Number one, Georgia coming to our city to play the Gators. Should and I go still? I think you should pull up to that. Uh, no tickets. You can't find tickets? Someone out there. I could, tickets. but it's Some, actually moving the moving weekend. I'm going to move in this weekend. Um, all of our stuff or your stuff? Just my stuff. Yeah. I'll, I'll hold the Bay Meadows down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take too long. Take a little bit of time. Do I take the table? I'd, I'd have to leave it here since you don't eat. Never mind. Talk about that. Talk on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. That's sports. On to voicemails. What do you guys have to say? How many do we have? We got a full inbox again? I'll tell you after we restart this camera. Oh, that's true. We'll be back in about one second. All right. First voicemail comes to us. Now, it says Missouri. But where are they actually? Let's uh, let's take a let's take a listen in. Yo, Don, yo, Drew, it's Flamingo Ad Boy. Uh, I ain't he goes. In a couple weeks. Heat Chargers. But 
still love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Got a quick question. Who would y'all rather have at QB right now? Patrick Mahomes or Justin Herbert? I've been debating with, with my boys, and they're talking reckless. I just want to get y'all thoughts on it. Get Okay, so this is like – this is convenient of you to bring up this right now. But if I'm starting a team from scratch or if I want to pick one of them and I need a win tomorrow, give me Patrick Mahomes. I don't know about you, Eric. Super Bowl champion. He set records, stupid yeah, records. I'm taking Mahomes. <laughs> okay, me too. That's uh, easy. I'm sure you won't be sharing this opinion with your friends. Flamingo ad boy. Oh, did I tell you I saw? No, I didn't. I saw uh, Ugly Ad Boy at Ikea Sunday Sunday evening, just randomly. Yeah? Yeah. Said, what's up? They look, world. They look nice. They look like they just got back from church. They look, they look pretty. You go to church? Oh, I guess those types of. What? <laughs> they No, they looked like. But I know oh. they were just going out to a nice dinner. I declare. Next. We know this one. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Angelo Gennadia from Charlotte, North Carolina. I wanted to call in and say uh, love y'all. Hope you're having a great podcast so far. We are. And okay. a couple questions. Couple. First, what are you dressing up as for Halloween? Hope you're looking at it. My guess is you probably already talked about it on the pod. But I'm gonna <laughs> Open the Second, show with it. Uh, I saw Hunter just post something about the Texans owner saying some anti-Asian remarks or mm, something like I that. I love that. Which brings me to my second question. Do you think this is going to be like uh, the – reoccurring trend in the NFL where owners, players even, or coaches will, uh, they'll be breaking news about them saying something that's, uh, not really, uh, not really good to say. I think it will be at least for the time being, just because <clears throat> the media has got to have something to talk about and, uh, it's no longer the kneeling for the national anthem. Anyway, uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Can't wait to see you. Yes, we actually are seeing Angelo in a couple of weeks here for the Bills game. It should be our first sponsored event by our new sponsor. So uh, Angelo has been super gracious enough um, to fly down for that because he's a great videographer. So uh, we're going to take him up on those services. So shall I get into this anti-Asian slur that he used? Please do. All right. So this is an article. Let's see what it says. This is by Mike Mike Silver. He's pretty reputable. Houston Texans chairman and CEO Cal McNair made a racially... Uh, so this is not Steve... Wait. Cal McNair. Oh, that's just not the owner. Uh, he made a racially insensitive... So the title is Texans chairman Cal McNair uses anti-Asian slur at team event. Yet the first sentence says... Texans chairman and CEO Cal McNair made a racially insensitive comment. So which is it? Let's let's pick this apart. He made a da, 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 comment at the team's charity golf tournament in May, causing gasps in the audience. Gasps. Yeah, I'm sure there were gasps. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure they <laughs> like weren't a like, movie. <laughs> I'm sure they weren't chuckles in the audience and upsetting numerous employees. I'm sure he did. Like no no joke. Maybe behind the scenes. Let's see what he said. According to several witnesses. Okay. McNair, addressing more than 100 attendees at the Houston Texans Foundation Charity Golf Classic. You know, that's white. At River Oaks. <laughs> I'm joking. Racially insensitive. <laughs> at, <laughs> at River Oaks Country Club, spoke into a microphone just outside the pro shop as participants gathered in the carts before leaving to tee off via a shotgun start format. At the end of his brief remarks, according to two witnesses who asked to remain anonymous. Convenient. I'm just... <laughs> I'm like trying to poke holes everywhere I can. <laughs> McNair, whose family has owned the Texans since they were founded in 99, told the crowd, I'm sorry that we couldn't get together last year because of the China virus. Mm. Let me just, everyone got, everyone gasped. I gasped, one witness said, especially the people directly across from him. He and Hannah seemed to think it was hilarious. It was dead silent. Okay. So... All right, so he called it the China virus. The China virus. Um, that, so a little, 
Let me just make sure that isn't the only thing he said because it's this title says he used a uh, Asian slur. Is China virus an no. Asian slur? That's racially insensitive. Yeah, I would say it's racially insensitive. It's not a slur. But China isn't a race, though. No, it's a country. So is that racially insensitive? Well, I mean, like, it, we're talking about jargon now. So, yes, it's racially insensitive, even though it's not a race. But you're saying China virus. We have not confirmed. If you, say, playing- if you say Chinese virus, does that change it? No, it's the same thing, I think. It's the same thing. We have not, and I'm just playing devil's advocate. I don't know this thing, this this stuff. So I am just playing devil devil's advocate. So don't fucking, don't come at me for stirring the pot. There have been reports still that we don't know if this came from, bats. from a, a lab or not. Okay. So. That's not, is that the point? If it did. <laughs> So there's a possibility that it did. If it did, China virus, like if they released it, can it be the China virus? I don't think that's the point. China virus came from Trump, and Trump made that a thing. And it was always thought that this started from Wuhan in China and came over to the States. So anybody that says China virus is going to automatically be like, whoa, don't say that because Trump being a president for four years caused everything to go south when it comes to the way we talk about things. So, yeah, if if, it, if the virus originated here and people were kept calling it the America virus, and I myself didn't think it was started in a lab, it's still at this point a conspiracy. I guess I would feel a little offended. Hey, can you not call it the fucking American <laughs> virus? I guess I would feel that way, but I will say that that's not a fucking slur. People, this you, would, article, you would have had to say chink virus. Oh Jesus! <laughs> I'm just saying that's a, <laughs> chink is a slur, not China. That so, is a country. So this article is such fucking clickbait. Texans chairman coming there uses anti Asian slur. Get out of here. Like, I get it. Yes, that's... Okay, he shouldn't have said that. Anti-Asian slur. I looked up chinks because I never even understood oh, gee, where this Say word. it again. Chink. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> You're I'll done. Say, I'll say every slur on this podcast so we can all feel inclusive. Chink, faggot, nigger. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. All right. We might be sponsorless coming in. Chinks. To- we'll be all right. Chinks <laughs> is an extremely offensive word used for Asians, not just Chinese, but for all Asian descendants. The word originated from many different major historic events. For example, it was used to call the Koreans in the Korean War or during the building of the Canadian Railway. It's equal to nigger for black people. Some consider it worse. Well, to each their own with that. But some I mean, some man, consider it worse. I don't know. Like it originated in China. China, the China virus. Do you think that makes people there okay, so if there's an I can see how dumbasses in America, some bigots, could hear that and say, Oh, there's excuse to be to discriminate against a Chinese person. Okay, I can see that, I guess. You so you have to you, you have to have common sense. You can't though because we live in America. Our borders are more open than the top porn star on Pornhub. Like we have so many diverse people here. You go to fucking Disney, it's all Asian people. So you cannot be a human mad at China for starting this virus allegedly and bringing it here. Because we bring people in from all over the world. So there could be a virus that starts in Norway. Norwegian people are in America. Mm. Everybody's in. Fucking the Russians have the most wealth in this country. Immigrant Russians have the most wealth in America. Read that in a book. We are a melting pot of people. So you can't be mad at an ethnicity for coming over here and bringing a virus. Because people are coming in over into this country all the time. We literally have pockets in America, different cities that are um, what's the word? melting pots. No, no, no. Uh, Inhabited 
by certain groups of people. Like Los Angeles is full of Hispanic people. San Francisco is full of Asian people. Miami is full of Cuban people. We're a melting pot. You mm. can't be mad at people. The word. You can't be mad at people coming from other country. China virus is uh, was just a stupid thing to say from the beginning. All right, Angela, thank you for sparking debate. Let's go to Ohio, where we'll hear. Hey from guys, it's uh, Brett Bell from Ohio, uh, Bell. brother of Alec Bell or Depressed Alec or whatever the <laughs> fuck his name is on Patreon now. Yeah, he's depressed. Uh, long time fan, been listening since episode three. Uh, first time caller. Just kind of wanted to first call time. in, and I kind of have a rant. Uh, after my brother's icebreaker on Patreon, he convinced me to immediately email you guys to set that up. And you guys never got a hold of me. That was back in like June. I had a bunch of questions and everything set up. And we were done. <laughs> now I'm a little heartbroken and hurt. But I do have to thank uh, Drew <clears throat> for turning me on. <clears throat> Sorry. Wait. Turning you on? <laughs> to what? <laughs> maybe, I just turn, maybe I just turned him on. Let's see what he says. Turning me on to Breaking ah, Bad. It's okay. one of the best shows I've ever seen. Um, and I absolutely love it. Hold on. Think did I'll he do that on purpose? If he did this on, on purpose. To break and hurt. But I do have to thank uh, Drew <clears throat> for turning me on. <clears throat> Sorry. Turning me on to Breaking <laughs> That's Bad. That's pretty funny. It's one of the best shows I've ever seen. Um, and I absolutely love it. Don't think I'll ever get to Game of Thrones because you guys kind of spoiled it a lot for me. But what? Yeah. So just keep up what you're doing. And I appreciate listening to you guys every week. Love you. I am so sorry that we didn't get to you. We can, you can be on the Patreon episode in two weeks. It just hit us up. You can be on two and not one. One week, whatever. <laughs> He's lending the week break. Tomato might be the, uh, the Game of Thrones. There's no way you remember the spoilers that we spoiled. You can watch it and still yeah, love not, the series. It's not like you know the characters. Like you can still watch the show. Unless yes. you took notes during nah. <laughs> during when we were talking about it. But you're welcome for Breaking Bad. Yes. Amazing show. Better call Saul should be around the corner. But shit, thanks for being a loyal ass episode three. Episode three. Woo! And we haven't heard from him. Well, yeah. we did. He emailed us, but yeah. come on. First time calling in. We'll let it I slide. didn't even know Alec had a brother that listened. I think I saw his email, but I think we were done with icebreakers. Well, we would have. No, we would have done it. We would have replied. Nah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Florida. What you got, Florida? Well, guys, what's up? This is Zoe from New York. So um, I just wanted to ask Eric a question. Eric, how does your team lose a nine overtime game and lose twice in seven weeks and you still alive? All I want to know is <laughs> why and how. I love you, DDB. And Andy, have a good night and podcast. Um, I love both of you guys. Have a good night to both of you. But before I hang up, I just want to hear a Tony and Romo impression on this show tonight. Um, or whenever you guys release this. Because it, it, uh, Andy has a really funny Tony Romo impression. But anyway, have a great night. Bye. Love you guys. Go ahead. Mm, the Romo impression? I don't There you go, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Jim. <laughs> uh, uh, it's got to come naturally. Um, but, bro, there's no way they just did this. Did he say, why am I not dead? Did they just score two more runs? That was a homer. Yep, homer. Bang. Holy fuck. It's 5-0, Braves. Run it up. Um, Yeah, why aren't you dead? Why didn't you kill yourself, he asked. I would never kill myself over fucking a game that men that don't know me play. All right. It wasn't that deep. Well, then you shouldn't ask if I'm going to kill myself because that's a deep question. We have suicidal people in our Discord. They're the ones that will kill themselves over football, not I. I move because I have so many teams out here. I got Kraken. I got Braves. I can just forget about one and move on to the other. You got to give this man a Tony Romo impression, man. He, he, uh, it'll, it'll come before the episode's over. I'm not going to do it. I'm I don't know, Dunn. I'm not a monkey. <laughs> what? I didn't call you a monkey. Oh. It just felt like you did because uh, you're well. racist. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Are we good on the time? Yeah, we're good. We started anew for the start of these. Hey, what up? It's Hunter, Rocket. Hopefully, Astros win these World Series. Starts tonight. It's gonna be gonna be nail biting to watch. Braves are great. Not really. They're Maybe down five zero. 
Washington Nationals rise, but, you know, still going to hopefully pull through. City of Houston is sacrificing Deshaun Watson again, so <laughs> Astros will win it again. I don't know. NFL's over. NBA just started. It's already over. Rockets crashed. It's a great night. Um, I want to bring back a would you rather question. <sighs> All right. Would you rather change your sex every time you sneeze or violently shit yourself every time you cough? Looking forward to your answers. Enjoy the rest of the pod. Love you. Bye. Violently shit yourself every time you cough or change your sex every time you sneeze. I would change my sex every time I sneeze easy. That would be funny. That would be fun. <laughs> you sneeze and you can start fingering yourself. All right. What? I would like that so I can learn like where my clit is. And I can make myself. Where my clit? Where my clit? Wait. Oh, 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 back. Okay. Sorry. I always, I always, it's because I've always wanted to know like what it feels like to orgasm as a woman and what dick, taking dick feels like. Yeah. Well, you and me both, partner. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> partner. <laughs> Why this a Western? <laughs> uh yeah because i could just get pepper and put it near my nose to change back if i need to be a guy real quick yeah thanks hunter astros suck they win <laughs> we didn't get his call last week so apparently i mean i, I played everyone last week shiver me tambers what's up boys it's uh sergio from duval uh i was just calling i wanted to know at this point in the season when we're getting like almost to the halfway point to the midseason what do you think is the Jaguars like reasonable actual expectation of where we could end up at? Because at the start of the season, a lot of people were said, you know, five, six, seven, eight wins. But Still now where we are now, hole. where you know things are getting better every week. Where do you guys think we could actually realistically end up? And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, do, we, I, do we do that like randomly at the end of sentences? I don't think that's how. Not we, anymore. I don't think that's how we fit my pussy. In. <laughs> well, no, it's not. But and we don't really. I, I don't know if we just randomly blurt it out anymore. But we fit it. Are in. we growing up? <laughs> We're definitely not growing up. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't remember saying my pussy anymore. But you know, that's how we. He's an OG listener. I can tell. Yeah. Is that was that's OG. Um, I got three to four wins. I was going to say the exact same thing. Wow. Three to four. It went from seven. I was like, boom, set seven. Remember when I said 10? Yeah. Three to four. Three to four. Looking looking good. Jets. Looking good. Falcons. Uh, no. Jets. Falcons. We're beating the Falcons. It might just be Jets. Actually, Kyle Pitts might have 40 fantasy points against us. Can't stop tight ends. <laughs> Um, true, true. We do play Niners looking suspect. Sus. Mm -hmm. Two wins. Hey, boys, it's Casey Metals calling in hey. from Columbus, Ohio. My guy. Just wanted to call in and give a quick rant on some meaningless college football rankings. Um, the fact that Alabama is still ranked above Ohio State. What? Having a worse loss to a two-loss Texas a and team when Ohio State lost to Oregon, who is one loss and ranked seventh. Well, I don't understand maybe he's, how. Maybe he's got a point. Well, he did preface Alabama with can still be ranked above us, but it's okay because it's meaningless. Um, and then I also want to say that C.J. Stroud is going to win the Heisman Trophy, and Travion Henderson is the best running back in college Ohio football. State quarterback. And, yeah. The Bucks are going to show out again this weekend. Might drop 100 on Penn State after that showing against Illinois. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I'll see you this weekend, Eric, and let's have a good time. I love you, boys. Peace. What are you looking up? Uh, Heisman candidates. Um, Casey, obvious Ohio State homer. Bama is better. They're always better. Um. Your one loss against Oregon, their one loss against Texas A&M. They're also looking at recent games that they played, and both of you are pretty much playing on the same level. So I like I, I think I said something about uh, Ohio State earlier in the episode that if you guys continue the way you're playing, you beat Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State, you're in the Big Ten Championship, you guys will be in the playoffs. So like what happens right now is very meaningless because you guys are ranked five. You control your own destiny. 
Who gives a fuck if Bama's above you? There's like five more weeks to play. And if you lose, you won't be there anyway. But if you win out, you're going to be in the top four. But like you said, it's meaningless right now. The season has to play out. And if it plays out in Ohio State's favor, you guys will be in the playoff. That's obvious. C.J. Stroud he is playing out of his mind, but I'm not even sure who like the Heisman front runners are right now. And I watch every week. The Heisman front runners, according to this website, is top five heading into week nine is Kenny Pickett. Quarterback for Pitt. Oh God, I have to click a link to get the next page. That's annoying. Mm. Um, Chuck, take your time. Yep, got to load all those ads. <laughs> Fan sided. Uh, fuck, come on. Um, four Kenneth Walker, Michigan State running back. No reactions from you? No, no, no. I haven't seen one Michigan State game this year. Number three, C.J. Stroud. Oh, there he goes. Number two, Matt Coral. Ole Miss. Ole Miss, yeah. QB. Shout out prize picks. Apparently he's just putting up numbers. Yeah, Lane Kiffin offense. And number one, I wish I said this before I went through the list, is probably mine right now, Bryce Young. Bama quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. I just calling, calling back from D.C. Uh, a few weeks ago, I called in and told you guys I traded Cooper Cup for Christian McCaffrey. Uh, mm. That has worked out horribly. <laughs> um, so I wanted to call back in and just give you guys a question to do. I want to know if the next fantasy football season started today, who are your top three picks? A lot of people are saying Derek Henry is going to go first. What do you guys think about that? Love the show. Thanks a lot. Bye. A lot of people are already saying who's going to go first next year. That's interesting. But I guess you have to go <sighs> Derrick Henry. Could Lamar Jackson, like, is he, like, I don't have Lamar, so I don't know. Is he stupid this year? Is he saying, like, one, two, three? Yeah. In the draft? Yeah. I don't think nobody's thinking Lamar. Yeah, probably top not. Three. Uh, I'll go. Christian just gets hurt way too much. He does. Derrick Henry. I should have took Henry one or one overall. How's Cook doing? He ate for he me was, last year. He was hurt for a good couple weeks. Okay. He gets hurt a little too much too. He didn't last year. Uh, but yes, Derrick Henry consists number one. Kamara? How's he been all year? I know he went off last night, but. I think his production slows down when Michael Thomas comes back. But he's doing it. He's like, he had like 12 catches, 100 plus yards. He's doing that good. That was one night. He's got, he's he's doing good. He started slow, but he's. he's Can you imagine if Chubb didn't three. have Kamara on the team? How many touchdowns? If Chubb Ch- didn't have Kamara. If Nick Chubb didn't have to share with Kamara. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, fuck. Cream Hunt? Cream Hunt. Oh. I was so confident. After I said that twice, I was like, <laughs> I am saying the right thing. It's not this wine that I'm drinking. I'm saying the right thing. Why isn't he picking up on this? If Nick Chubb didn't have to f- compete with Cream Hunt for touches, can you imagine how many points he would score? Because cr- both of them could put up 20 in, in a game. Chubb is so good. I see Cream Hunt with like 20 points with with three games this year with 20 points. It's ridiculous. So top five players right now in fantasy, all top, like, it's crazy that we go first two rounds running backs because they're so thin, I guess. Yeah, it's because they're thinner. But most of the top players are quarterbacks. Right. But there are a lot of them, so you can wait. Jalen Hurts is fourth in fantasy points. (laughs) That is funny. On Yahoo, right? What? It's, and he's above Kyler Murray. And Lamar Jackson. What? No cap on God. Looking at it right here. But Cooper Cup first. Derrick Henry second. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cooper Cup is first over Derrick Henry? 
Cooper Cup has four 30 plus games in fantasy. He's, well, he's I'm got, beside myself. He's got 10 plus targets every game, over 100 yards in four of them, two touchdowns in four games. Wow. Stafford. Holy shit. That white on white connection. Okay, sorry, keep going. Don't call it a bologna sandwich. Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry second. Then Tom Brady. Then Jalen Hurts. That's blowing my mind. Yeah, that uh, that's also blowing my mind. For a 2-4 and four team. Then Kyler Murray, then Lamar, then Patrick Mahomes. Stafford, Josh Allen, right, still at quarterbacks. Let's do uh, non-quarterbacks. Tyreek Hill. Whoa, my team. Hello, shout Jamar out. Jamar Chase. Devontae Jamar Adams. Chase. Jamar Chase, Devontae Adams. Quarterback, quarterback. DeAndre Swift. What? That's the second running back? Second running back. Swift. Okay, keep going. Quarterback, quarterback. Jonathan Taylor, Colts. No. Debo Samuel. No, not going to go top three. Marquise Brown. No. Eckler. Uh, not a top three. That's hard. Mike Evans. I, I don't know, Jim. <laughs> quarterback, quarterback. That's crazy. We haven't gotten to Kamara yet? No. Or Nick Chubb? No. Chubb been hurt. Kamara, sta- Kamara started slow. Cook was hurt like a few weeks. Can we do points per game instead of total points, please? Points per game. Do, 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 do. Still the same. A little. Josh Allen moved up to second. His average. They're carrying Brady, Hurts, Murray, blah, blah, blah. Herbert, quarterback, quarterback. Gary's Kamara. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the top like 15. So. Derek Henry. <sighs> Jamar Chase. <laughs> He's I guess getting, he, Jamar Chase. No, not really. But I would have never thought Cooper Cup would be the breakout star in fantasy this year. But he's not going top three. Definitely not. He'll be there around two. Najee Harris. Oh, that's one. That, he might go top three. He's getting so many catch. Is he, is he that far down? What's his points per game? Because he's getting so many catches. 20. 20 points per game? He might be, in his sophomore year, he might be top three. Yeah, he's getting, holy shit. He's getting like 24 carries, 23 carries, 16, 15. And a lot of catches. Yeah, he's mostly a catching back. He only has two rush touchdowns on the season. Oh. Uh, but he's getting all his PPR points catching the ball. But If we're going off of like right now, it's tough to say, like after Derrick Henry because – it's, yeah, Derek. It's, it's Derek Henry and everyone else. Derek Henry's one on all these lists. Yeah, it's one or two. All right, next call. Hey, sub guys, Oliver from Montreal. I was just calling to talk a bit about the Saints. Monday night they were playing against the Seahawks. Quite a good, quite a good game. Even it was low scoring game. I thought that uh, y'all had a, y'all had the Seahawks on their schedule actually. And with Wilson out, I definitely see you winning that game. If y'all can contain Geno Smith and choke on their, not choke on, I mean choke their running game, <laughs> choke their running game, defensively, you'll be good. I'll uh, be good. And offensively, y'all saw what Kamara did last night. So the man was feasting. So I don't see why y'all can do the same thing with, uh, James, with James Robinson. Robinson and Trevor. So... After next week, Jags are two and I forgot the number of five. lines you had. Five, six, <laughs> two and five, two and six. Uh, outside of that, just a quick shout out to uh, Price Pick, man. Price Pick's been, I was going to say legendary. Okay, I was maybe going to cat. It was good to me. It was good to me. Make some money, lost some. But uh, I know y'all do Price Pick. Also, you make different players, different, sure. different sports. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Next time that you're doing a price pick and you want to include hockey, 
just take a look if the Edmonton Oilers are playing and if Connor McDavid is playing that night. If he's playing, no matter that it's over or under for his points or his goal, guys, you could be over. This guy is a points machine. You won't be disappointed. But uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm about to go back uh, study and uh, later tonight watching the Montreal Canadiens against, yeah, the Seattle Kraken. First time playing uh, the new franchise. All right. Peace out, guys. Ciao. Ciao. This man always talks to us like we're his significant other. I kinda, love it's it. Though. Cute. It's I like it. I wasn't roasting him. Relax. But yes, my Kraken play his Canadians tonight. He was going on a tangent about the a player on the Edmonton Oilers. Hey, Olivier, I'm not that deep into hockey yet. I don't even know who's on the Kraken, but I'm watching. We're also not on prize picks right now, or else I may take you up on that <laughs> hockey offer. I'm on a wine drunk right now, and I am just in a different world. Is that the Chloe? It's a Chloe. That? It's Pinot Noir. It's a Chloe. The reason I said that she could have that whole bottle because I'm not a fan. Oh. So I'm the wrong one. Chloe. <laughs> yeah, it made her tired. <laughs> I am tired. Uh, love the call from Canada. And I love you. You're great caller. Great caller. All right. I knew you were doing it. I knew you were coming with that. <laughs> you know you did it. <laughs> Yo. It's your boy. Colin. I'm hungover. Oh, it's Colin. I just picked up sushi from my goddamn ATV. We're going to see how this goes. I'm, uh, I don't even like sports anymore, frankly. Frankly. I had a screen Eagles game on my fucking phone on Sunday just to watch us get the fuck beat out of us from the Raiders come back. Don't think Jalen Hurts is like, well, I don't know about Jalen Hurts. I know for a fact Nick Sirianni's not the guy. I hope he gets his ass fucking fired. <laughs> um, he's fucking done. Ben Simmons is back, I guess. I don't know. How you guys doing? <laughs> he sounds like Portnoy. Horny. <sighs> That's amazing. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hungover, sushi, distraught Philadelphia fan. Uh, <laughs> he, Jalen Hurts might be good. Nick Soriani or whatever the fuck his name is. Um, what Gotta do you, go. What do you think about, you think Minshew's going to come in for Hurts? No. Or are they going to just let Hurts ride out? Hurts is going to ride out. Hurts is a fucking top five 17. fantasy score. <laughs> it's true. But I don't think Nick Sirianni got him in fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Miles Sanders, they, they fucking hate running the ball. They do. They hate running the ball. The amount of time I see them drop back, drop back, drop back, I'm like, you have Miles Sanders, run the ball. Run the ball. I hate this Eagles team. Nick, I agree with, with Colin. Nick Soriani or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. ain't it. No, he's not. Dylan Hurts probably ain't in either. You have he s- doesn't have the arm strength. You have Saquon Barkley's protege, and you're not using right. him. Back-to-back years, I do have Miles Sanders on fantasy team. So when I saw how he's being used this year, I wasn't too excited because he would be – he gets me over the hump. I'm a top six fantasy team this year. He gets me top three. Yeah. Without him, without the production – no, nah, there's no but uh, no so uh, Fournette though. How about me getting roasted for drafting on auto draft Fournette in the draft and back to back he scored 17, 30 something. Well, I'm just 20 I'm something. I'm just saying you could have Dak Prescott and Eckler right now and you'd be all right. <laughs> I could have Dak, Eckler and Fournette right now. <laughs> Except I have Mahomes uh What's, well, uh, Mahomes, what's that tight end for Ravens? Mahomes, Andrews. Will be, Mahomes will be all right. Yeah, I know it'll be all right. This was like his one anomaly game. Fuck, I could have Pitts too. Wow, I could have. Oh, I forgot <laughs> Pitts twenty three and twenty. Oh. Ah, I should have kept him. You traded him. Although he traded all these players to zero seventeen. Like they were gonna help him. <laughs> I play him this week. It's Mahomes. I if got he Mahomes beats me week. with those players, I'm on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next. Hey guys, it's John from Jacksonville. Hope y'all are doing well. Uh, as always, expecting a Jags dub this Sunday, but as always. knowing us, we're probably going to end up losing by like 22 or something like that. It's very specific. Um, fuck the Titans. Mm. Luckiest 
damn team in the league mm. beating Was the Chiefs and the Bills in back-to-back weeks. Mm. People need to stop saying Tannehill is one of the better quarterbacks in the league. And, like, people need to stop thinking he's, like, some amazing quarterback. He's pretty fucking mid. <laughs> and is this MJF? he'd literally be nothing without Derrick Henry. But whatever. So with the Titans. Uh, Blitz his ass, by the way. I, I agree with that. You won't know what to do. <laughs> Blitz, anyway, Blitz, I got Blitz three Daniel. Number one, Patty Mills, MVP, baby. Book it. Number two, okay. I bet Penn State goes crazy this weekend and beats Ohio State by 14. Yikes. Uh, number three. Wrong button. By the way, that's yeah. number one. Anyway, number three, and fuck those overtime rules. Number three, my Miami Heat will be the third seed. That's kind of a lock. Anyway. Love you guys. Go Jags. Uh, and Andy, nice call on the Eagles winning the decision, bud. Uh, I changed it to <laughs> the Cowboys. <laughs> this man was full of takes from everywhere. He was. I'm a little tipsy. So remind me what he what he said. Well, he said Tannehill was mid. Oh, yes. And he said he, he he's said. sick of people riding the Titans because they got lucky beating the Bills yeah, I don't, I don't and think, the Chiefs. I don't think that's luck. <laughs> Especially when the Chiefs scored three points. Yeah, it's not luck. It's definitely not luck. Luck is like when something happens that uh, is usually out of the uh, Chill. Oh, never mind. Right but, you know, if you are holding Patrick Mahomes and company to three points during the game, it's not luck. Yeah, the, these Titans are nice. That's I, game I, plan. Big Jags fans, and, and uh, all of us are on this call and here. He Live. said Penn State was going to run the Buckeyes this week. Man. That's why I said Jazz Jazz. This jab. might be the <laughs> worst call we've ever got. He said Patty Mills MVP. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Relax. <These takes. laughs> you are full of these takes uh, today. Um, and that I don't, I just don't agree with any of them. Yeah, that's. Uh, he's just a mad caller. <laughs> <laughs> You're mad. Uh, but uh, we appreciate you calling. I don't remember. I don't recall this this one. I don't remember. I don't recall hearing him call before. Neither. But voices sound familiar, though. In Andy's phone, he does. Sound, he has a cute voice. I, f- I feel like he might be a little cute. Might I be MJF. I, I can kind of tell the mid comment. Mid. Mid. <laughs> mid. I that queued up. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Let's go to Ohio again, Bryce. Up, guys, this is Nate from Youngstown. Shit. I've never called in before. Welcome. I've been a big fan of your show for a while. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to say on your 200th episode, someone brought up Hank Bang University. So I went back and listened to it again. And I was laughing my ass off (laughs) for literally like 20 minutes in my driveway. (laughs) That's all I had to say. I don't have any bold takes or anything. Just wanted to touch base. All right. See ya. Touch base while you're professional. Spank Bang University. What a great name. That must have been in our voicemails. That they used to talk. be my favorite porn site. I don't watch porn anymore, but thank you for yeah. saying Why does it just seem longer? <laughs> it's like, is this shit going to end? I don't, but thank, thank you for the call. It's a funny episode. <laughs> if you want another. That was my script, I think. If I you want that. another Donna and uh, Father. All right. You want another <laughs> daughter and father uh, adventure? Tune into the Patreon this week. Uh, and thanks for calling. First time caller. Awesome. What's up, guys? This is Jason from Utah. Another first new time, one. long time. Fuck. I think I'm probably your I first love it. caller from Utah. Tonight. Okay. Uh, I just joined the Patreon last week because I got to get those hung and promiscuous episodes. <laughs> so, congratulations on my money. <laughs> I am also a, a long time. Suffering slash suicidal Jags fan. <laughs> suicidal. Been a fan for over 20 years. Wow, I am not Utah? from Jacksonville. I just randomly chose them when I was seven years old and fucked me for being loyal as fuck. But I am making the trip to Seattle this Halloween for the Jags game. I'm hoping I run into Eric there. You should. I'm also hoping Andy goes too, but I don't think he is. A little late. So my quick question is... um. If you're going to a live game, would you rather see a superstar like Russell Wilson play in person or have him not play and give the Jags a better chance of winning the game? That's a good question. And Personally, I'd rather see a guy like Russell Wilson play. I was looking forward to it, actually. Um, but, yeah. 
All right. Well, that's all I got, guys. Love you guys. Can't wait to listen to the pod. Since you do more traveling, let me try to answer it for you, and you tell me if I'm right. And don't let me sway your answer. Oh, you you I got my answer. I know. <laughs> you rather the Jags win at all costs, no matter what it means on the other side. They could have the biggest superstar injured. You're going for the stadium atmosphere and a Jags dub. What's your take? That's correct. Yes! <laughs> Though, uh, I was happy to go to Cardinals Jags to watch Kyler. Yeah. Even though I knew we were getting smacked. But when we put up a fight, it was much better. But regarding this game, I've seen Russ play in our stadium. Oh, and it was fucking glorious. Was. Best game ever. But I would much rather watch us try to beat Geno Smith. <laughs> try to beat Geno Smith. That's exactly how I was going to go. We're going to try to beat Geno Smith. So, you know, it's it's always amazing to be able to go out, travel across country, and see a dub. And Russell Wilson not playing gives us a slight, slightly less than a disadvantage. Because <laughs> we're ass. Going to Ohio Yo, again. what's up, Dun and Drew? This is Bryce Cole from is. Ohio. Ravens. And I'm going to just keep it blunt. My Ravens this weekend got the shit kicked out of them by the Bengals. You giving up again? I was not expecting an ass kicking like that. I thought it would be close because Cincinnati's offense over. has been looking good. But Jamar Chase made Marlon Humphrey look like a practice squad player. And Marlon Humphrey is a top three cornerback in the league. And their defense stepped up kind of shut down literally everything that the Ravens wanted to do. And, yeah, we just, quite frankly, got our asses kicked. But in the grand scheme of things, to go into our bye week 5-2 and two with our injury situation, I'm, I'm overall happy. It sucks that we did lose to an in-division rival, but five overall two. being 5-2 and two going into the bye, I'll take it for uh, where we kind of started the season. Uh, when it comes to the NBA, I know you guys aren't too big on the NBA, but uh, I'm very excited that the NBA is back. My Cavaliers aren't looking too bad. Um, I my Cavaliers aren't looking. Yeah, too and I bad. don't care about these NBA takes. <laughs> the five and two comment, like I don't think the Jags have been five and two since 1999. I can't fathom starting a season five and two. I just don't know what what that means, how that feels as a fan. So, Bryce, you're five and two. Be super fucking happy because you're a fan of a great organization who constantly turns out great product on the field. And know that there are a lot of fan bases that don't know what that feels like. I don't know how we're as loyal as we are without ever experiencing five. I've never experienced five and two as a fan. Nigga finna cry. <laughs> and you're getting it this year with so many injuries. And you're going into the bye week kind of, meh. Fucking grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, my nigga Bryce, boy. He calling every week. Yo, this is... Bryce, this shit has got to turn into like a, a Chronicles because you call in every week giving us the update on the Ravens. <laughs> Boy, y'all fine. <laughs> y'all going to be in the playoffs. <laughs> Your emotions be fucking hilarious, bro. Five and two. You're chilling. You're tied for first in the AFC with the Raiders and Bengals. The Raiders, are, you guys don't even got to worry about the Chiefs right now. <laughs> You're fine. Enjoy the bye week. Fuck, you have Lamar Jackson. Let me play the rest of his voicemail. <laughs> I know we just beat the Nuggets last night, and of oh, course it's regular <laughs> season, so it doesn't yes. really mean much, but it's nice to see him play well, go up against some playoff teams from last year and come out with the win, so kind of excited. I'm thinking that the Cavs can have a possibility of fighting for that eighth seed in the East. I know it's not sound impressive or nothing like that, but it'd be better than what we've had the past couple of years, so. Like I said, keeping it uh, short tonight. Have a great rest of the night. Great rest of the pod. Love you. This isn't um, athlete, Bryce, right? It is. Oh, it is athlete. Okay. First athlete of the month, Bryce Ostmeyer. All right, we're finishing voicemails with Florida call. Let's see. I think this is Jesus. 15 minutes. 
What's up, Dunn and Drew? This is Zach from Gainesville here at UF. Uh, Gator fan. I don't really have much to say. The Gators well, then why'd are you call? ass I'm just kidding. cheeks. <laughs> uh, all my fantasy teams are ass cheeks. <laughs> School's kicking my ass cheeks. Um, yeah, kind of sucks, but I got a would you rather for you boys. Thanks. Uh, would you rather sneeze come or come snot? Excited to hear your boys' answer. Uh, have a great rest of the pod. What's the difference between coming snot and coming come? It's the same consistency. What was the would you rather? My thing out. Oh. oh. <laughs> so you probably thought that was really weird for me to say. I heard come and it went out. Would you rather sneeze come or come snot? <laughs> I, okay. Kinda... I think I'd rather sneeze come because... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's not super. Sometimes cum comes out and it's not pure white. You know, if if you get it most in a tissue, no one's going to notice. So give me a, let me sneeze cum. That means I'm coming when I, and I'll say when I sneeze, sometimes it feels like an orgasm. So I'd have to sneeze into someone well, to make a child. No, you'd still come at your, your, your cock. But the snot, the snot from my dick not making nobody pregnant. It's just, this is, we're thinking too much. I'm rather. I'd yeah, rather don't sneeze on your sister. I'd rather, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather come snot because oh. I, it's, I still get the feeling of coming. Like I'm not like playing with my cum. I'm just shooting it into a towel. So I'd rather just, I don't want cum coming out of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's one of us. All right. Thank you guys for calling, especially you first time callers. It's always much appreciated. Uh, it's why we do this because we like getting you guys out of your comfort zones and calling into the show. Yeah, that's exactly why we do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's for your growth as a, as a human. A few extras I have here. Oh, please. Um, trying to get Andy into cryptocurrency. Oh. A lot of our listeners are invested into crypto. It's just one of the many, you know, investment tools we have available to us. <laughs> uh ETH is booming. Uh -huh. Sheeb Anu is another one that's uh like Dogecoin. It's like a meme coin, but it's like it's going up pretty pretty high and consistently. So, uh those are the two I'm in. So if you guys have any other cryptocurrency coins that you guys are dabbling in we'd love to discuss talk about them um come to join our discord that's where we discourse most of these topics but um crypto's been on a high the past like week and a half two weeks so wanted to get out there and tell people like if you have some money to you know throw around and try to see if it'll grow download coinbase robin hood Crypto.com, wherever you find yourself most comfortable investing in, and try something out because that is how you make money. Your money got to make money, and you can only do that with investing. So let me buy this SHIB. SHIB. What do I search? SHIB. S-H-I-B. S-H-I-B. SHIB Inu. Yes. SHIB Inu. It should be like a number that's significantly less than one cent. Yes, significantly. I, I don't how much do you have? I have 54 million sheeb, which is equivalent to like $2,500. You have, wow, you have over two grand in there. Yeah. Let me, let me drop a 50. I started with 500 and it, it went up, my $500 investment went up to $1,300 in like a month. So today I dropped in more. Oh. I put in another 1000 today. Well, I'm, wow. Because I'm... I'm very bullish on the coin. Really? And what is telling you to be that way? I'm seeing the growth. But it's just a meme, so... Well, it doesn't mean nothing to me. What's driving this growth by this SHIB? Um, I would need a crypto uh, researcher to come on and talk more about that. But I think when people talk about a coin a lot, it drives the value up. So who's talking about it? Just Twitter, like people on Twitter, like there's a whole Twitter profile dedicated to this coin with millions of followers. Like it's a, it's a thing because it's a meme coin. 
like Dogecoin. Like Elon Musk talked about Dogecoin and it went up to like 74 cents at one point. So it's a meme. I so, just don't understand. Are people exchanging Shiba for services? No. I just, just, what just, the fuck? It's just investing. It's like you would buy an AT and T stock and it goes up. It's same. But thing people with are but people are buying into the prospect of AT and T as a company, and succeeding. people are buying into the hype of this crypto the rising. Hype. hype. Yes, they're not buying into any actual thing. Correct. They're buying into an idea. Correct. I just don't fucking like it, and I don't get it. You don't have to like it. But, but I will say that I just bought 900 <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm a proud owner of 987,007 Shiba Inu. <laughs> uh, Welcome to Team Sheeb. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say, the reason I'm talking about these two coins is because it's the two that I'm in, and they've both went up since I've been in them. Uh, I invested in Ethereum when it was twenty nine hundred dollars. It is now worth forty three hundred dollars. Fuck. So nice. Though, though, well, Ethereum is actually like a, a stable coin that is used for trading NFTs and shit like that. There's a, a fuck ton of coins, but Shiba is just like a meme coin. It's a hype coin, and who knows where it's gonna go? But it, that's the fun part. You only invest money that you're willing to lose, and crypto is a very high risk tolerance investment. Like your risk tolerance has to be high if you want to get into crypto because that shit is a 24 hour trading cycle, unlike the stock market, which ends at 4 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday. Where crypto, if you stay on the app midnight, the numbers will be keep will keep moving because it's just a 24 hour thing. So you just gotta put money in and see what happens with it. But it's, it's fun. I think it's fun. It's fun to watch money grow. And I've had this addiction since I started my little Vanguard investment. So Ethereum and Sheep, that's what I'm in. I've got two others, but I don't have too much money in those. I've got a Polygon Cardano and I got like $2 of Dogecoin. So um, I'm in those. So if you guys are into any more or, have an inside scoop on any others let us know because i'm always looking to diversify um another random thing i applied for a global entry today you know what that is no uh it's like one step above tsa pre-check uh i got it because it's like a credit card perk that i get with delta my delta sky miles platinum card i get like a hundred dollar statement credit for um purchasing the because a hundred dollar application fee, so I get that back for buying that with my card. So I was like, "Fuck it!" Um, basically, a free application to potentially get five years of TSA pre-check, which means I don't have to take off my shoes, I don't have to take off my laptop, skip the lines. What do they have to do? A, like a severe background check on you? Yeah, it's okay. extensive. So I'm also bringing. It's, I think it's it's a necessary perk for. As much as I travel, I hate standing in fucking lines at the airport and watching all these people ask these TSA agents, do I have to take uh, me? <laughs> Bitch, keep it moving, buddy. Uh, so I'm looking. Hopefully I get approved for that. But I, there was a criminal offense section. And as you all know, I've been arrested. So when I got to that section, I uh, it, it asked, have you ever been uh, convicted of a criminal offense? So I went and Googled is resisting arrest a criminal offense because that's what my arrest Yikes. was it was resisting arrest without violence and trespassing so i put yes and then it said if yes please explain your situation so i was like i was arrested in september 2015 for blowing a whistle at a football game and i was charged with resisting an officer without violence and trespassing but it was later expunged, but you can Good still word. find my mugshot online because TMZ did an article about it. <laughs> so I, I wrote that in my application and hopefully whoever's checking my shit gets a little laugh. And after they go through my application for that, I have to set up like an in-person or virtual interview. I guess they try to make sure you're not crazy and they confirm all the information you put in the application. But <laughs> Uh, I applied for that today, and I just thought that was a funny thing to tell. 
And it was. If I get approved, I will be going through TSA pre check, skipping the lines, and I've never had that before and look forward to that if I can. Speed through the airport process. Uh, lastly, I. Good? Yeah, about four minutes. Lastly, I set an appointment for my J&J booster shot. Whoa, you set an appointment? November 3rd, 6.30 p.m. I have my COVID, my J&J booster shot, and I did a flu vaccine in the same day because our boy Alex, the doctor, said we should all get one, and I trust him. At the him. same time? Yeah, it says on the website that both are safe to get at the same time. Yeah, you're going to be. I didn't feel anything from the J&J shot except a sore arm. And that's normal. I think I'm going to, I guess I'm going to wait since I got COVID. I feel like that's a booster in itself. So I'm <laughs> going to wait a minute before I get my booster. I'm going to see how it treats you. And see I, if you be acting stupid. And I did some research about mixing the vaccines. And uh, I found that the uh, Moderna and Pfizer. So you know how they found blood clots in like rare cases of blood clots in women who took the J&J vaccine. Well, in the Moderna and uh, Pfizer vaccine, men ages 16 to 29, I'm in there, the higher end, who receive those two vaccines, they have a increased risk of heart inflammation. What the fuck? Um, so to avoid that potential risk, as rare as it may be, I'm sticking with the J&J and not mixing because J&J did not affect me the first time. I do have this wart in the bottom of my foot. Don't know the source. I don't know if it's from the J and J vaccine. I don't know what else it could be from. But okay, it's not from the <laughs> vaccine. <laughs> but uh, I was good. Haven't got COVID yet. I'm just going to get this booster because I felt fine the first time, and I need more antibodies in me. And they said like you should have got the J and J booster two months after, but you know they're coming out with new two. Sh- yeah, they come out with new shit. Like the more research they did, so I'm due for a booster. So that's November 3rd. So my arm will be nice and sore for Bill's tailgates. But let's get out of here. We have a big vlog coming to y'all this weekend. Don't hit the button yet. Penn State, Ohio State, Seahawks, Jags, Kraken home game. And then next next Jags home game, we got Bills. And um, that'll be a little reminiscent of our playoff game where I got in a fight and he got kicked out. So, And that'll be the start and, yeah, of our I got new kicked out. partnership. So... Yeah. All of our Florida listeners get ready to gamble with Dun and Drew because we got a big partnership coming with a big brand. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Patreon episode is coming up. We're going to record it after we press stop on this one. Um, so subscribe if you're not already. You're going to get um, where we're moving. We're about to move. And you're going to get a new Hung and Promiscuous episode. And. We're gonna talk more about this partnership uh, and and a lot more. And so. Chip's wedding. And Chip's wedding. That's our show, guys. Make sure to share this episode with your parents, friends, enemies, and I'm not just saying that. Share this motherfucking shit. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Make sure to call into the show if you haven't yet. We love new callers. Make sure you watch this episode on YouTube.com/slash Dun and Drew. It's our Halloween episode. We got decorations. We got costumes. Check us out, man. And subscribe to our Patreon, like we said. Until next time, this has been Dun and Drew, baby. Happy Halloween. Uh.